then they can say they voted against it. I, I looked at to, it. Yeah, they're trying to kill it. So. But I, I can't believe I'm believe. I, I understand what it's saying, <laughs> you know, because. But we really break the law. Our contact representatives they won't do it. Well, it makes it chills. It's on the cake here. He's against this. Oh, really? Yeah, Ray Howard. He came. There she is. He came. He came before the planning board. Yeah. He was against it. Okay, against it. yes. Well, thank you, John. So uh, it looks like we've got everybody here. Thank you for the information. Tara, can you hear us? You know, we're not going to take a position. Can you hear us, Tara? Yep. Okay. Yeah, you're 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 coming through clear too. So I'd like to call the meeting to order. It is uh 602. 602 p.m. on uh, excuse me, Tom. Wednesday the fourth. Yep. Mr. Mr. Hoops, thank you. Um, so tonight we have the only people that are, I think are are not here are Kelly, right? That's it. I think um, so. I would like to actually. Um, um, and so I'm just calling the order and who's here. Yep. Okay. Anything, any changes to the agenda? So yeah, I'll put this on as an agenda change. Okay. Um, so I do have tonight um, an updated sort of breakdown of the invoices. We're kind of getting towards the end of the original warrant article so that i'd like to um put on the agenda um later on to discuss with tara about maybe um starting to utilize some of the funds from the second warrant article so that's that okay um, so update on invoices why don't we put that uh in item eight we can do that any further changes to the agenda yes uh, yes I, I do too when you're done. Okay. okay. Um, so I just wanted to let um, the committee know that um, I've been in conversations <clears throat> with Jill Hauser. And um, at this time, um, she's going through some um, personal things and she uh, doesn't feel like she can commit um, to being a member of the committee at the moment, um, but hopes at some point in time in the future when she's um, in a better position that she would like to come back. And I told her that we'd love to have her. So she has officially stepped down from the committee. Okay, so that'll be up under here. <laughs> Thank you. Joel Hauser has stepped down. Okay. Uh, anything else uh, from the people in this room on changes to the agenda right now? I uh, don't have any additions. Tara, do you have a change? Yeah, just just so we don't forget them, I, I think it would be good to put them on specifically the, the land use map. Um, that I have started to show you um, and then the action plan. So maybe those could be four and five, the new four and five before we kind of go off to short-term rentals. Okay, um, okay. so after, uh, after three and four, so, oh. be, so before five, right? Um, before before. So we have three three master plan draft things to talk about, but there's really five. So after the nodes, we should talk about the land use map while the nodes are fresh in our minds. And then we, the big thing tonight really is the action plan. Yeah. So I would make the map number four and the action plan number five. Okay. I make a motion. We accept the uh, agenda as amended. Second. Any further discussion? <laughs> Sorry. All those in favor? Aye. 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 So um, I guess we can start uh, on item number one. Is that correct, Tara? Yeah. And I, you may have copies, but I'm going to screen share anyway because I want to edit and follow along on the screen. So okay. it's going to be easier for me to do it this way. So um, yeah, this is a uh, third draft. So we're at the point of, um, did I hear you right in terms of the changes that you wanted to make um, to the last one? And, and 
as Jessica said, and you're getting to the point where I need to start kind of reminding you that when you decide there's a change you'd like to think about what, how important is that change and, it, and might it take money away from something else? It just kind of get into that point with this chapter in particular. Okay. You want to just go through section by section with the changes? Yeah, yeah go ahead. Yeah. So uh, did anybody, was everybody okay with the changes on 3.1? Uh, just one thing on your header. Um, it's you said you know you've changed this you've booted historic resources into another chapter so yep. uh, the header should just say natural resources it yes says, says so, so this is historic right now well you she, should be aren't you seeing she, that she removed that up in the aren't head you, russ aren't you seeing it struck out and in red Oh no! In the head, in your header, above that. No, no, no. Above that. He's talking about yeah. Third, the line on the page. where it says third draft. Yeah, it. Yeah, it. it minor, a minor point, but that's. <laughs> it, I wanted to you to remind me. I, I'm not sure you really reached the conclusion of whether you wanted historic resources to go before or after top. this. Oh, the very top. Okay. Uh, it, I, I have no problem. Um, I think that, uh, you know, it's pretty long. And I think it would be my, my sense is that as long as it's in the document, I don't care. But somebody there has to care more than I do. <laughs> I mean, I think it's, 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 it uh, can be a standalone. It's important enough. Uh, and I, I think that's a good suggestion on your part. Mm -hmm. Can we leave it like that? And just move it <laughs> to another. Don't, it's, All right, don't, I'll, don't. I'll 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 look at it again and see where I, whether it goes better before or after. That's fine. No, I think it should be the historic part. It does have a lot of history to it, but I, um, you know, the what what's our? It's not the first chapter. I think it can go later. So, anyway. Ditto. Um. Let's see. So section three one, I didn't have any any other changes. No, it looks good. All right, let's let's kind of break up three point two now. If I have to change the headings because this was written as if this was going to be three point two natural resources, and then three point three would be historic. So water resources will become 3.2 but you don't need to worry about that but let's let's break this up and do water resources first i had one thing on uh, under surface water that first uh, uh sentence approximately 23 percent of Bolton's geography is comprised of I, I questioned the use of geography as opposed to say geographic area and I don't, I don't mean to pick bones, but as a geographer. <laughs> Excuse me, Tom, can you use your microphone, please? Thank you. I, I, I just, I don't know if it's anyone else finds it awkward or not. Yeah, that's, that's a good, that's a good point. That's a good one. Anybody else have anything on surface water? No. I don't. I don't think there were um, the only real change I think I made in there. Um, there was a change at the last meeting we made to the wording in this sentence. Um, there is currently no protection for the shorelines or tributary streams. And you guys said you wanted to say any streams, but we already have that in a previous sentence. So I just took it out. If to, yeah. mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It was just redundant by then. So um, we didn't. The next change was here in the beginning of wetlands. Um, Bob, I think, had asked for the state's definition to be in here. So I put that at the beginning. <clears throat> With that, I had to change and make the next thing two sentences because only the NWI stuff meets this definition these additional hydric soils don't so i i just made that a second sentence
<clears throat> right, what page are we on? Then right, right okay. above groundwater. Um, yeah. You got surface water quality. Yeah. Okay, right, water. right. The paragraph above groundwater. Some somebody brought up um, feeling like it wasn't clear enough what we were doing with getting rid of the ten thousand dollar ten thousand square foot um, threshold that would have the wetland buffer. So I just tried to change that sentence a little bit. Requiring protection of a vegetated buffer around wetlands of any size, right? Is that what you're saying? I, I just eliminated mention of the 10,000 square feet. Yeah. Okay. So, I like the fact that we have those explanations of what something is in there, whether it's, you know, um, you know, setback or whatever else, so that, you know, people have a better understanding of it. So um, I like those changes to the wetland section. Mm -hmm. There were no changes in uh, aquifers or floodplain. No. Um, I added a little bit more about the wildlife quarters in fish and wildlife. Just to, to reference that project that you sent me the information on, Ross, it was from the 2016 study committee um that's where it originated I'm, okay i'm reluctant to put that map in that you sent me i think it could really no get, i don't th i don't think we have to i think we can just reference that yeah. that information that map could really freak people out because it has almost the whole town as either important habitat or a corridor yeah i think most people in that would town would agree we have a lot of wildlife habitat so. yeah right but the people that are worried that you know about property rights you, you don't want to lose them before the conversation even starts about zoning changes right page 315 i really like the fact that that last sentence is in there information is also available for homeowners that that kind of thing just as a reference somebody doesn't have to read it but if they want to know more they've got a source i think it's really right. good having that stuff in there it is yeah, I just rearranged that a little bit. Yeah. Too. Um, scenic resources, I think the only comment was to add, mention a stonework, like walls and foundations at the beginning of scenic resources. Um, yeah, I had a, a comment on that. The very first sentence, uh, the town of Alton has a wealth of unique cultural and historic features and it's under scenic resources. And I'm, I'm wondering... Huh. It, it, I mean, it, it's not, it doesn't fit quite. You know? I think like when we have the historic uh, section too, that that would also have a scenic resources right. cat like thing in it. So this might need to be tweaked a little bit so that it focuses just on the natural scenic resources. And then we, yep. yeah, like, good catch. It's probably in there from, from when it was both. Yep. Yep. Then uh, just on that picture of the people sitting up on, the cliffs on Mount Major looking at Alton Bay. There is actually a better picture that shows the entire view over the lake from the top of Mount Major. Do you want to use something more dramatic than that picture? Um, maybe. Um, I'll, I'll send it to you. Yeah. Did Is it one that you sent? You sent me a few. I. It might be. I, I kind of liked that this had people enjoying the view in it. Right. Mm -hmm. And you get Echo Point. <laughs> well, I mean, I've we just been, don't have we don't have many pictures of people enjoying the town, so that's why I picked this one. Okay, I do have one with it, people looking out over the lake and stuff. Okay. The big view. Look more. I have some of those, so I'll send it to you. See what you think. Subdividers. Seventeen hundred. <laughs> I'll get you a coffee. I'd like to see that. I'd like to see that. And then, uh, let's see, I have a couple other notes in here. 319, 318, both look good. Very good. I Conservation have... lands, you, you wanted to add spin if I did that. Can we and put an advertisement in there, uh, uh, Russ, for? The trust? No. No, no. For uh, anybody who wants to help work on trails. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> so 
Yeah, I, no, I wouldn't so, do that. <laughs> so, so you did put in spinoff, but um, then later on, you refer to it as the Forest Society. So if you're going to put in spinoff, put in parentheses Forest Society kind of or mm -hmm. something, because now you've introduced a new term called the Forest Society, and we haven't heard of that one before. Right. Yeah, like, I don't think that's my... That must have come from you, Russ, because I don't have a call on that, but that's all right. I'll fix it. Yeah. No, I'm, I'm, I'm not uh, claiming any um, <laughs> credit for screwing up, so. <clears throat> oh, here's a big change. Um, so on the map, um, we didn't have any way to make granite update their map, but I kind of finagled the two new Morse preserve additions. It's also another piece of property that is has been conserved that should show up on granite. It's the Daniels piece, which is a 48 acre piece just to the north of the Mount Major parking lot, uh, the Robert 78 acre piece. And this is the granite layer. I yeah, it, it, they must not have it, but it does, that is conserved now. It was given by the Daniels over in Laconia to the Forest Society a couple of years ago. Well, how important is it going to be to change a couple of maps? I mean, it takes a while. Probably, probably not, but I mean, it's just, I, I just spotted it as right. an it takes, it takes a while. I've got a, I've got a, it takes quite a while and there's two maps like this. So. Yeah. Okay. And then, uh, that's it. That's the only other comments I had on the entire document. You want me to send? Did you capture all that? Do you want me to send what I did? It has the notes right right in it. If you want it, I, I'm all good. I'm all set. Okay. So, um, let's see. so are you all you happy enough with what our input right now on chapter three, Tara? Yes. Okay. Let's go on to chapter four land use this is the the um, second pass at this thing yep um the um just as on the first uh, amount of information about uh, uh, dwelling units is it true that uh they count dwelling units like an apartment is a dwelling unit as well as a whole house yes. mm -hmm. okay yes. so, and so these aren't necessarily houses that we're seeing. These are dwelling units. I was wondering if that should be clarified in here, that, that it includes individual houses as well as multifamily units, you know, whatever. Yeah, I, I, I can look at that. Um, I don't think you've had a lot of new multifamily no, we haven't. We, we have a few, but it's yeah, it's, it's a very small number. But it yeah. just it just includes it does include it. So all uh, right, I'll make a note to add what dwelling units counts. If I had to make a guess, I'd say that it was in the area of maybe one percent, if that many. Yeah, we can get that off the, the state's housing inventory. Roger, sample, and Charlie. Yes. <laughs> Yes. Yeah, but um, you're probably accurate with one percent. Yeah. Um, well, we'll look that up. We can move forward. So, um, you would you'd also wanted to make the point here about um, that new wastewater treatment technologies are opening up additional lands, and I wasn't really sure where to talk about seasonal, but um, and we don't have that number yet for 2020. So I added this little paragraph going from 2010. Yeah. Well, that's good. Um, just on the, um, we changed, we talked about the uh, highways, the access from highways, easy access to cities, the South by our interstate highways. Actually the access is, um, if I can do this right here. Um, they're state arterial highways. It's really chat, um, Route 11 and Route 28. 28. 28. And then you get, eventually you get to the it, it, interstate. What page are you on? I'm on page. Four, two. Uh, under section 41, oh, page okay. four, two. It, it, somewhere in there, it should say uh, limited access highways. 
Un yeah. Unlimited? No, well, limited. no, I mean, limited. Oh. The state, the state classifies the highways as arterial. Yeah, I, I, I'm not. I wouldn't put that term in. I mean, that's that's a technical term. It doesn't really tell the reader anything. But I, I can, I can qualify this to add what you want. I think without using that term, because yeah, it would jump out at people in town that we don't have any interstates near us. Yeah. Right. You you have easy access to the south via the interstate highways because you have those other state roads. But I'll I'll qual I'll add that. I got a, a quite roads. dumb question. I guess what it is. Um, on um, where are we? The second paragraph down on page four two. In twenty ten, forty five percent, and then back on page one at the top of the the second uh, group of. Um, in between the two graphs during the same 50 year period. Is it improper to actually use the number as opposed to spelling out the number? I think it simplifies it if you actually use the physical number itself rather than spelling out the number. And it actually it makes it makes more of an impact, I think. Because you're concentrating on reading the word as opposed to seeing the number. Yeah, it's a mix. Right. Presentation is mixed in places you do it using 16% as a number and sometimes you're not. Right. Mm -hmm. But I mean, to me, I agree. I, I thought that the 45% uh, of the units were dwelling uh, summer uh, usage. That has a real impact. <laughs> um, it's too bad we don't have available what is what's what the changes are, but I, I just I think that the use of the physical number as opposed to the spelled out number um, is a simpler um, term for most people. Okay. I know that's being petty, but <laughs> I'm not. I'm not quite sure I get it. So Are instead you of writing like four or five and then a percentage symbol, you wrote out the words forty-five percent. Right. Oh, okay. And then below below that, you put it grew by sixteen percent. You put right. sixteen in and then one percent. Right. I think we're just looking for consistency. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I, I wouldn't always get an A for consistency. Okay. <laughs> so yeah, we're being nitpicking, but that's what we're told to do. <laughs> yeah. That is it, good. I never would have picked up on it. <laughs> but you see, I see it now. <laughs> it makes sense. Yes. So just for consistency right. on the consistency theme. Um, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, 4.2 land use history. I just made a note to myself that when we do the history section, we've got a we're talking about history here, and then we're doing a history section. We should double check to make sure that the, the two they don't say different things. No, and they yeah, and I, one I, refers I have to the that other. Note already. <laughs> yeah, it's just that some, I have that note already. Okay. Yeah, when we get there, we just make sure it's consistent. Right. And a little bit of redundancy is okay because yeah. as long as you don't use things, as long as the numbers aren't off or something like that. Right. <laughs> yeah. yeah. It's a trouble. But some people are not reading through the whole thing, they're just going to certain spots, you know. So yeah, that's why that's some coming. redundancy is important. So a little further down in four two, the last paragraph on on page four three under section four two. Uh, it says, over time, Wolfboro and Meredith have become the primary commercial centers on the lake. What about Laconia and the Weirs? I mean, that's pretty commercial. Were you well, doing that just because it's the same size towns? Were you saying it that way? or or Because Laconia is very commercial. Yeah, it is. More than Wolfboro and Meredith. Yeah. It's a yeah let's just put that in. I'm just looking for things that people who live here would know. And, no. and if it's off, then they're going to say, these people don't know what they're talking about or something, you know? Like, uh, yeah. I, I think uh, uh, Guilford has a pretty large uh, commercial area. Commercial area. Right. Well, all those, uh, the Mountain View. It's just Lowe's and places like that. <laughs> I, I, but I think, I think the reference to Wolfboro and Meredith has to do with the town itself or the town center that it's a walking shopping place. Yeah. 
as opposed to big box stores like Guilford has. Yeah, but if you look at the Weirs, that's a walking place. That's a walking place too. So. It's a stay away from place. Oh, just kidding. So could you put in Certain something times. like, you know, overtime places <laughs> such as soon. Laconia, Wolfboro, and Meredith? Yeah. So that way it's not just sort of like specific to those three towns, sort of giving some examples. How's this? All right. Have over time, several other communities such as the Cornia Wolf Farm Meredith. Yep. Yeah. Perfect. It says several. Such as. Such as. Such as. Yes. Oh, yeah. Several. Several other communities such as. And I'm not necessarily thinking about big box stores. I was looking at jobs and job center, and I can't remember, to be yep. honest, why I didn't put Laconia in. Yep. Okay. I didn't have any more until we get to development trends four three. No, that looks good. Um, on page, um, got a couple of comments on page four. Um, four four. Um, talk about um, at the turn of the century, from eighteenth to nineteen hundreds, Alton was busy with commerce and so forth. By the turn of the century, Alton's economy has normally built on recreational opportunities and the quality of life possible by the town's extensive Lake Winnipesaukee shore frontage. One of the things, and it's a little, it is important. It was the early 70s, wasn't it, when 28 was rebuilt? 63. 63 was, 28 was rebuilt. And, and in the early 70s, 11 was rebuilt, at least yep. to the north of the, yep. of the bay. But um, today, that makes a big difference because those roads provide ready access. Yep. It didn't happen when they were first put in, however. So something else drove it. But once it got going, it made it even yeah. more. But so originally, when I used to go to Wolfboro, you would drive along the east side road, 28A. Right. Yes. Right. You went the old way up yeah. Wolfboro Rail. And so Stagecoach Road was the original road to Wolfboro. <laughs> no. So I, anyway, um, yeah. In East Alton, I guess I it just right struck it me that it, that that uh, one of the things about Alton it has two real major roads that comes right to it. Yes. Even though they weren't used when they were first built that way that much, they certainly are now. They certainly are now. Yeah. But it's a big deal right now mm -hmm. because if you think about people living here and they say, "Oh, it's only." 50 minutes to Portsmouth, or it's only 45 minutes to Concord, you know, or Manchester's 50 minutes. You know? So anyway, so, so I think the that traffic a... circle so unique, or, or if you will, to come into two major state roads to go yes. north and to go um, east. Right. You know, there's, I don't think there's a traffic circle oh. like that in the state. No, it's the only one. No, but and it used it's to good be that we could preserve a crossroads. It the right. No, I know. Yeah, years ago. And the technical thing of West, what was the uh, commercial West. area was a dimension from the middle of the crossroads, 250 feet from that. And it's gotten changed somehow. <laughs> so, right, so I, I, I put in a note. Here. I just make a note. I, it's somehow that. Yes, that that's I made a, a really important thing. I've no. made a note and a note to Major. send me to my note. So we're good. And then um, the other one I got was this one here. Um, so on the bottom of page four, four you talk about uh, non-residential development, uh, the, you know, around the lake, water frontage. Um, it forms more than half the town's residential tax base. Actually, when you look at the graph on the next page, it's closer to three quarters. Yeah. It, I think a, a point should be made there also that there really isn't much, if any, available property on the lakeshore. That's all privately owned, and yeah, uh, you know. Part. And I don't think that's that. You know, there may be one or two instances of a change there, but nothing, uh, no noticeable. Right, but I, I think we, if if you read through this, the the conversion of all those places and it continues at a fast pace is driving the, the tax base way up and it continues to drive it up. So right now it's more than almost three quarters of the tax base and it's likely to definitely 
be even more than that in the future. Uh-huh. Of the residential. Uh, those people are also starting to scream a little bit too. Of the residential part of the tax fees. We hear it. <laughs> right, but Got that right. It's, it's residential. However, <laughs> it's a unique type of residential and then it doesn't load the schools with any kids. Way to lower the taxes. <laughs> All right, so um, the, the point you, you just made about not being much left, that's, that's in this next paragraph. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I, I think Says the rest right of now. it is fine. I was just my big point was if you look at the graph, it's it's easily approaching three quarters of the tax base, yeah. and it's probably going to get there. Is it, the town's ratios are pretty much of the residential tax base? Does anyone have a more accurate number? I heard one time twenty nine miles of waterfront and all. Now, I don't know what the exact measurement is, but I don't know. It, it might be worth. I thought it was more than that. But, well, if you if you count the other lakes, I mean, it's no, no it's just, just just on the lake, big lake, just on where Pasak. I I don't know. All right, we we don't have that number, so let's keep going. You but uh, just all the islands. Yeah. So, are you saying that uh, that this graph here only represents the residential portion of the tax base and not correct? The- so, oh, and that's what, it, okay, and that's I, what it says in the legend. I didn't right. jump out at me like that. Residential property, other okay, okay, got it. So it doesn't represent the current Higher use. In- town, it represents of the res- residential oh. properties. Okay. It's three quarters of the tax base for residential okay. properties. Okay. All right. And I think that was uh, the point that Bob wanted to brought up a couple times early on. Yeah. <clears throat> so um, or, uh, one of the things in, in that edition, um, uh, you, you, there's, there's blue lettering there, and then it says um, carefully cited high quality business development. Um, again, when, when I, I, I have a definition for high quality business development, and I'm saying that the development of businesses that serve the needs of the town for services and employment is most important. It will not have a significant, it will not have a significant on keeping the it will not have a significant impact on keeping the tax rate low. The most significant impact will be the increased value of shorefront property. But at any rate, the, getting to a point, whenever we talk about business and the master plan, I really think it ought to be focused on jobs for, for people locally and things that we need to have in town. Not just, in other words, you could be a small uh, light manufacturing thing, for example, mm-hmm. that would be, um, it would have high quality jobs or a medical office or law, law offices or whatever. Okay, so if, if everybody is okay with what Russ just read, then Russ, just send me that note, please. Okay. But, but I just want to make sure that we're not saying we need another Lowe's. We need another. No, 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 no. Costco. Local, local right. businesses, uh, local uh, purchase. At, at the moment, we don't have the. The, the, the space for it. But we don't want it anyway. Exactly. <laughs> to encourage small business. small business. Well, it's not necessarily small businesses. If BAE Systems wanted to come in and have a, a small manufacturing plant here, you know, something just because the labor force happened to be here, you'd welcome them in because they'd be paying $30, $40 an hour wages. Mm-hmm. Right. You know, and but they would be in a, a, in a small industrial park well, I was going to say you look. You're thinking of of, of a developing a, a plan for a, uh, uh, like I said, industrial park area. It's let's, a possibility. I think the master more, plan ought to leave that. Let's talk about that when we get to future land use. Right, but but I want to be consistent wherever this yeah. appears when we talk about business, growing businesses that they really should be manufacturing some, something that gives good employment for people <laughs> in town. And something that would, that is a need that the town has, and not something, right? Something we want to encourage, right? And just don't accept the first thing that walks through the door. Oh, right, right. You know, 
something that works for the state and something that works for the town. Yeah. We'll have to rethink this. Working in. We'll have to rethink this wording a little bit, Russ, because this was about the tax base. This yeah. sentence is about the tax base. So, you know, it might be a different sentence that we add for you. And then I make the end into a third sentence. Yeah, I just don't think that in this town, it's it's good to perpetuate the myth that more businesses, big businesses coming into town are going to reduce your tax rate. Yeah, it's not going to do it. No, it, it, that was a, uh, as, as Russ said earlier, Dave Hussey idea. <laughs> The bulk of taxes comes from the lake. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And, and that's right. so, so you'll send me that wording and let's. let's yeah, go. I will. We are a bedroom community. Boom. We have a lot to get through tonight. Okay. As opposed to we thought we'd have a short meeting. It really shouldn't uh -huh. come out that way. I told my wife it was going to be long. Uh, All right. So you'll send me that. I have a note. I'll send it to you right now. I think a couple of good restaurants would be nice. <laughs> Okay, and we're on four four, right? Yep. Um, I had a question about the two churches in Alton Village. One of is that including the two church buildings? There are two churches. There are two churches. Yeah. Oh, we have the Catholic Church. Yeah, but is that would that be considered in Alton? No. Village. No. No, that's in East Alton. Yeah. Right. Sure. And you're also you're thinking about the one that's for sale. Right, so that that's why I'm wondering about the wording because I think in Alton Village there's only one church. There are two churches in town, but in the village there's only one church. Oh, there's two. Right. There's one a, on Church Street and one on Main Street. One on they're, Main Street. Uh, that's a, that's they're this isn't it owned by the same and one is for sale though. One yeah. of the buildings. Is the one on Main Street is for sale. Yeah, so that's not a it's not a functioning church. It's just a church building. Oh, right, but right. it's for sale and can be used like it could be something Commercially. else in six months. Yeah, yeah. but. Yeah. yeah, you didn't. That's been for sale. Oh, I didn't know it was for sale. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Price reduced. Three. It hasn't been used as a church in quite some time. It's been actually like daycare center. And, All right, and, I got it as a church, a church, a church. Yeah. Okay. About several churches. <laughs> well, that's not a church. I, I have a question down at Alton Bay. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Yeah. You wanted me to add um, post office. I don't. I don't think zip code makes sense anymore if we're going to say post office. It sounds yeah. a little redundant. Right. Such as its own post office. That's, I would just say it's on post office. Yeah. That makes sense. Because a post office has a zip code. It, it's... Um, one of the things that I thought would be somewhere to get in here on the top of page four, seven, many of the existing homes and structures located in the Bay are seasonal in nature and are constructed on substandard lots. I don't know if it goes here, but many of these are becoming VRBOs. Somehow we got to get that. I don't know well, if it goes here well, or someplace, but. Well, I think that's, that's later on the agenda. We, we haven't said anything about short-term rentals and I think that we need to. So okay. right, let's right. check it out at once. VIBO? Short-term rental. Oh, yeah. Short-term rental, basically. Vacation rental by owner. Short-term short, short -term rentals. We'll, let's talk about that all together and then I'll backfill. Okay. Um, So just on the Lake Winnipesaukee shorelines, I had a number of comments here. Um, bear with me. Um, <clears throat> the third sentence, this area is a, has a very traditional lakeside tourist field with a campground, some remaining small cottages, and roadside businesses interspersed with larger homes, sink views, and stone walls. So it's kind of like a mash of things thrown together there. Um, the, the larger... The roadside businesses and larger homes are not side by side, okay? The larger homes are on the water and they, they've been, they've been uh, converting. The smaller cottages on the water are being converted to larger homes. So that, that, the way that's worded is not quite correct because the larger homes and the businesses are not interspersed 
on the same road. Do you want to send me? Some are. Send me your changes for that. Well, on the west, she's talking about the west. Involving uh, village area, the uh, um, along the western shore, and she, so she she talks about the bay. And then she's talking about the western shore. So, so the, coming out of the bay, mm -hmm. you go out of past the campground, you go past back bay, then you come to the storage units, and mm -hmm. then eleven D opens up, and then then you get to eleven D, and those are all being built in the big homes, but there's no businesses down there. Isn't King Birch in there still? One, one or two, you know, it's not, it's not a general There's a statement. couple of large storage buildings, but there's, not with big boat storage, but big, residential. Home, but big homes right next to them. No, not large homes. No, right. That the only place that occurs is next to the two um, hotel, motels. Yeah. So then maybe just rewording it so that we identify that the commercial uses are just kind of sporadically interspersed. Well, they're on 11, not on 11 D. Well, there, I mean, the except for the two hotels, right? But there's the two hotels, yeah. so Ross, can you just send me the revised wording that you want for that? Uh, I have, have to think about it more. I mean, it's it's I'll just you, I'll give you some. These are these descriptions are just to give a feel for the areas of town, yeah. And then the other thing about stone walls, uh, there's really only stone walls up Rand Hill Road. You know, there, there really isn't, you go to the rest of it and maybe up Cherry Valley Road a bit, but Cherry, yeah. Yeah, but the rest of them don't have. Oh, so. There are no walls not, left not, on Woodlands? Not, not many. It never was. It was all woods. It was too rocky, too ledgy. Never was, never was farmland. Um, and then, uh, then uh, there's another section, which I'll try to work on this and give it, Give it back to you, Tara. But it, you said there are three of the the towns uh, commercial marines are also located in West Alton. That's, only two. That's that's not quite correct. It is West Alton Marina, mm -hmm. and which is full service. And Island Marina Association is now it's a marina, but it's just gas. It's not a. Full but there's service. also greens, the old greens right. place. Well, that information Cove, came from marina. John. That's full service. And and Mount Major Cove, there's another spot that is zoned for it. Is they never built anything. But there's no marina there. There's no marina there. Yeah, no, but, but it's but zoned for it. Minch Cove and West Dalton Marina. But yeah, right. But those are the only those are the only two. two. But All right. Not, I thought I did this from the list that Jessica sent me the other day, but I'll work on that too. I yeah, just want to I just want to make the point that. This would be fine not even saying how many marinas. This is just to give a feel, just to give the reader the feel for the different parts of town. Okay. It doesn't matter in the least about the details in this. I just, have to agree. We might okay. be getting a little picky on that. All right. But I'll, I've made a note that you're going to send me what you want, Russ. Yeah. Um, we could just keep going over and over these descriptions of current land use and not <laughs> Not be adding anything to the plan. Right. Right. No, I, I agree with you, Tara. Um, so I have some other ones. I'll make some suggestions for this whole section. No, we can't really work that way, Russ. When you send me emails after the meetings, I it I can't really work that way. It's going to really run up the bill for you guys. You need to come to consensus at the, at the meeting. At least you need okay. to be telling the, the committee what you're going to send me and they give it the nod. So I know it's okay to include it. But when you send me things after the meeting, I don't really know what, what's okay and what's not with the group. Mm -hmm. So on the Eastern shore of, uh, you're talking about camps, right? On the bottom of page four seven, um, there's three camps over there. And there's two. There's three that remain. Two of them were sold off to Wit and Camp Alton. All right, I went and Kianka. What you sent me? Kianka's in Wolfboro. No, no, it's not. No. Its address is Wolfboro. Physically, it's in in Alton. In, in the bay where my family camp is. 
I was going by what you sent me, Russ, after the last meeting, but whatever. All right. We're just going, I feel like we're going in circles here where <laughs> I received some stuff between meetings and now it's not right. At some point, it's just going to be good enough. Or make it less specific if you can't agree. Right. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> You need to keep in mind that every time you make edits, I have to reformat the chapter and reread it to make sure all the references to where different tables and pictures and whatnot occur. So right. it adds up. I get that. <laughs> Winnipesaukee Islands on 4.8, all that looks good. Yeah, I thought that was nicely handled about, you know, less impact because, you know, you have to get there by boat and, you know, describes it well. Yeah, you made a bunch of changes to this next one at, at the last meeting. Mm -hmm. Alton Shores. Yeah. Uh, to, just a general rhetorical question. How much of Alton Shores are permanent residents? That, that's almost entirely vacation owned. It, it, a lot of it has uh, community water. And that gets shut off and all those buildings get shut down for the winter. Um, so there are quite, I'd say more than half, the three quarters of it is seasonal. But there are places that have their own wells. There are places that have their own wells. But as you're going into Alton Shores, um, there are community lines going from building to building to building. And a lot of these run on surface. So all that gets but shut off. But see, this last, this last paragraph here, you guys want it added. You talked about it being um, converting the year round and the ones that are being purchased in larger homes, those are the ones that are putting in there are private wells. Yeah. But I mean, I can remember when, you know, shacks were on some of the lots, which oh, yeah. were bought and a house was built there. And then the house was taken down and a McMansion was built, you know, so three things that I even know about. <laughs> So do the changes to that look okay, to that section? I, yeah, I think it looks good, in my opinion. The, the Alton Shores and other, uh, other lake shores. And then um, this addition, the 4.4 4 was from you, Ross. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> looks good. And we couldn't resolve the different numbers for current use. So I just went, I just changed it to the states throughout. Yeah. I, I have a qu one question here, just above where it says rural areas, Alton gateways, uh, that paragraph, mm -hmm. um, the first glimpse of town that most visitors experience have for the most part remained scenic and retain their character, but it's basically due to the fact that it's a limited access highway for access roads. So, I mean, I think that should actually be mentioned because that's what makes it remain so attractive. Otherwise there would be cuts on the road everywhere. Yeah, well, there would be. And the road would be useless. <laughs> South of the circle on route 28, that's all 
general access. That's not limited yes, access. correct. Yeah, you know, I I think this this sentence applies no matter which way you come into town, whether you come in on the two limited access highways or or the two other ways. Yep. It, well, specifically, twenty eight South is is not limited access, and also one forty is not limited access. Right. But and route uh, route eleven South is limited. Eleven South, eleven West, and twenty eight North. Not, not where you first come into Alton on 11, though, right? Right. From the south. See, 28 really, as far as I'm concerned, goes east-west, not north-south. Right. East, east. I, I don't, I'm just not sure that's important right here. I agree. Because later we're going to talk about how to keep them scenic. That's where it's important. Right. Okay. Um, for us, I think you you brought up the point of uh, phosphorus versus nitrogen, but there there really are more and more studies showing phosphorus is is an issue. So I I I added that sentence instead of taking it out because you have sandy soils with high water tables, and that's where phosphorus is right. mm -hmm. been shown to be more of an issue than we had previously thought. And, and but the thing is, um, if you have a properly operating septic system, you wouldn't locate it. It would, it would have to be redesigned in its soils like that. They wouldn't want you to place it on that. So, but the ones that are currently on those, yeah, they're a problem. Great. Except for those ones that have to appeal to the selectmen because there is such a small lot. And the, I think it's important that we address the fact uh, that Phosphorus is the limiting factor in the lake. Phosphorus is increasing in the lake, and you have all these homes on little lots in sandy soils with high water tables. But the, the stormwater, I'm glad you put it in, the stormwater is the principal source of phosphorus because phosphorus is generally transported by particles and not as a dissolved phase. So, What's the source of it? Can read it. <laughs> the source of it is uh, in human waste. It's in fertilizers. It's in um, salt. In, in, in plants. It's in salt. And it and uh, it's it's in the soils. Yeah, I think the, also though. But I mean, uh, Penny Jones pointed out to me years ago that in '73 the town passed an ordinance: no f uh, products containing phosphorus were to be sold in the town. Right. So I don't think anybody else knows about that. But I mean, it's, it's one of those things that if it's not, I mean, most lakefront towns probably shouldn't have it. You're talking about lawn fertilizers, right? Uh, washing machine stuff oh, and everything yeah. else, anything. A lot, yeah, it of, comes a lot of it's a ca catch basins um, from the, going under the roads yep. into the Merrimeeting River. Merrimeeting River has been coming in and, and phosphorus is coming in. Um, cyanobacteria yep. coming in from Mary meeting and entering into Lake Winnipesaukee. So I think what she's from. written here is, is correct. So I think it works. So I have the that marked up map again here for consistency. Uh, this was just something I moved that's not changed. Right. Fourth, fourth, yeah, that whole section got moved. So. Okay. I don't remember why you wanted this sentence gone from the middle of this paragraph, but, but you did. I, I thought it was true. The uh, one of the things that should come out in this section, I think, Tara, is that 
the fact that the village relies on subsurface disposal into its drinking water aquifer is a problem. But it's, we're disposing of our waste into our aquifer that we drink out. Yeah, except according to DES, not necessarily as long as you've got the protective radius. But I don't think I don't think we can document. I don't think we can document that that's a problem. It, it's a it's somebody dumped some um, solvent down the drain. You're going to close the, the town wells down. So I I, I know. Yeah. <laughs> you mean you're not supposed to wash your paintbrushes in the sink? <laughs> PCE any any of the heavy solvents any of the heavy chlorinated solvents like. Um, for uh, dry cleaning and from automotive repair places where you de de the degreasers, right. any of that stuff escapes, it sinks to the bottom. But, but, and it goes Russ, we talk, about, we talk about aquifer protection in the natural resources chapter and, right. and the lack of protection for it. That's not what this chapter is about. That's, this section is about it as a development limitation not a threat to the aquifer. We've dealt with that in another place. Okay, fine. I just made the comment. I think, I think it, I know it's tempting to put your entire knowledge base in, in everything, but, but sometimes you distract from the points you're trying to make if you do that. That's why we got you. Keep us straight. <laughs> Attempt. Not really much going on in the land use regulations. I think um, we need to revisit some of future land use after we talk about the nodes a little bit more. <clears throat> right. Um, the main the main changes were here in talking about the lakeshore residential zone. Um, you wanted the, the minimum lot size clarified. Yeah. yeah. They added, um, excavations up here with natural resource based land uses where I had agriculture and wood products. I think yep. that was an oversight on my part. Where else would you put it? Right. I mean, it's in your zone now and I, I think it's important to mention it here. Even though you require a special exception for them. I, Russ, I added another mention of wildlife corridors here under clustering. Yeah. <clears throat> I was wondering if you want to get rid of the word cluster. This column type of conservation subdivision. Yeah, I think we talked about that last time. I agree. It's a. Uh, it's so a not. So right. it's a trigger. <laughs> okay. We'll just we'll we'll consistently just call it open space. Is that what you're saying? Yeah, either open, open space, space or yes. conservation. Either one. Yeah, we've been we've been referring to open that space. as an open space. Mm -hmm. Open yeah. space division. You use the word cluster and you get shot at. <laughs> yeah, Let's just backward. say this type of subdivision right here, then. I mean. Yeah. 
We do not think we need an adjective. But I think that, you know, the sketch you used, Tara, on 423, mm -hmm. it really brings home a point to somebody of what you can do by leaving some of the property open and developing the part closest to the road. Um, a, you're cutting down the costs and whatnot, but you have that corridor that's still left. So Tara, I have a comment on the last sentence on 423, um, how you refer to what Alton currently offers as part of the inclusionary zoning provision. Uh -huh. And I think that we kind of dabbled on a little conversation about replacing that current ordinance with the open space subdivision. So do we, do you want to leave that in there now or do you want to just? Yeah, because it's what you have now. Currently, right. Okay. I don't know if many people will understand what inclusionary zoning is. No, because no one's even used it. Well, let's just get in, in references to meetings and whatnot. Yes, but <laughs> workshops. Well, just get rid of it. It's easy to just get rid of it. Yeah. Yes. Yes. I just want to explain kind of why there are more houses in the right hand picture than the left one, right? We have. That's kind of why that sentence is in there. Too. Well, you could say when protecting a high priority resource, a density bonus might be. Offer to show in the example below, period. Right, period. That's right. what I just did. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Perfect. Next. Just um, on page uh, 425, engage the community. Um, the last sentence, the point of a thoughtful community consensus building process would not necessarily be to enable individual property owner concerns such as, I'm not sure about the word enable. I was a little confused by that. Consensus building process would not necessarily be to enable individual property. I'm trying to say it wouldn't wow. enable them Realize. to specific proposals so maybe it's just a bad sentence structure yeah it's just a little convoluted to understand to me anyway okay i have a, a small net back on page 420 uh use of the term lake hospitality heritage when I read that title, I think of hotels and uh, we have a substantial lacking of uh, hotels <laughs> in, in Alton. You notice. <laughs> and uh, just some alternate phrase to hospitality, I think would be a reasonable thing to do. Of course, that's one of the points I'm making in this section is that you don't even allow hotels in your, <laughs> in your like, district. We, well, we do allow them. Uh, once the Oak Birch uh, Hotel burned down, nothing replaced it. Well, well you, you, you don't yeah. allow them in your Lakeshore zoning district. Right. In the Lake but, but the word hospitality to me means hotel. Yeah, right. Well, so what do we want to say there? Welcoming heritage. <laughs> it's not welcoming now. <laughs> it, it really isn't. What she's saying is, is that we used to be like that. Mm -hmm. right. Not anymore. Not anymore. I think the, the title like, is specifically trying to reference that. Right. Well, what happened in most cases was that the, uh, the value of the rentals was so low and a house was so high that or p places changed hands and nobody rebuilt within the time limit of two years. And the, the cottages died and everything else died that way. How about if we just say Lakeshore Heritage? 
Yeah. That's fine. There you go. That will fix it. Yeah. Yep. That works. I told you it was a net. We got it. I have to say that um, one of the most controversial pieces that we have in this section on page 421 is the discussion in the Lakeshore residential zone about trying to change, make some major changes in there, um, like recreation, hospitality businesses. Not to say that we shouldn't try to encourage it, but if you look at the people who live around the entire lake, if I lived at Piper's Point um, and said we wanted some sort of a recreational um, development near my place, I think that would all that would go over poorly. Um, my thought on listening, you know, just thinking about where this might occur, it would probably be from the bay up as far as maybe Echo Point or up as far as Woodman's Cove or something like that. Mm -hmm. That's about as far as something like this might have a chance. But other than that, once you get out into the rest of the lake, maybe at West Alton Marina, uh, but um, that's about it. But did you feel? Um here we talk about the express exception criteria might I mean it, it, we're not just talking about opening it up but having having them be special exceptions looking at all those things. quality noise lighting traffic even visibility right. from the lake right even with that uh, it, it it's going to be a controversial section well yeah. that's why you have public meetings and i mean yeah. the first yeah. first step is after the planning board is going to be a public hearing on this so um, and I'd like to, I'd even like to see you have, get some public input before you're at the public hearing stage. This, this right. is just, a, it's just an early draft. So right. we'll see, you know, <laughs> you'll yeah. see what the reaction is. Yeah. Leave it as it is. Yeah. I'm, I'm not saying to change it at this point. I'm just pointing out. That yeah. Pointing it out. And that's going to be a big we'll see how it goes. To get over there's, it. there's a lot of pretty major changes in here. So Mm -hmm. yes. It's going to be interesting. <laughs> oh, yeah. But, but in most cases, they're, they're responding to what the survey had. I, I think right. if, yeah. if you look at what we've done here and you look at the things that were raised in the survey, you checked all the boxes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. on those. That, was, that was our job. So Exactly. I mean, that's but that, that's the thing that, you know, if you're not listening to the citizenry, how can you argue that you're doing it? And then, you know, if, if somebody questions it, you say, well, this is something that was mentioned like 39 times. And uh, uh -huh. well, not necessarily. That might not be the, the answer they're they're going to hear as well as, well, how much of a change are you comfortable with in the next few years? Right. And then and then maybe you back up a little bit. So first step is to put out there what you really think is going to be the way to achieve the goals and and see see how they take it and go from there okay so uh are we done with that section i've gotten down to page 426 i don't see anything anymore no that's i think it looks pretty good yeah to move forward with. Yeah. All right. So I have a couple notes for myself, and I have a couple places that you're going to send me the new worrying, Ross. Yeah. I think I have a question. I just, I got to find the right page here. I'm sorry. Uh, it's up towards the beginning. Yeah. It's 40, 4 3 and 4 4. Is it going to be possible to keep that one? Um, figure uh complete rather than split it yes no, but you're not seeing the right formatting when you see the red line and strike out because the red line is gonna go away right okay i just no. I, I'm, I'm i'm asking the dumb question because not everyone's going to turn to the next page <laughs> no i i never break up things yeah. like that it's just thank that, you thank it's you just that what's crossed out That's you're seeing you're question. seeing things that are crossed out tonight all right, so we're done with that one. Um, so I wanted to kind of circle back to the whole idea of the nodes and commercial lands. Um, 
And then that's going to cause me to have to go back and make some more edits to that chapter. But I, I think they'll be clear. So um, some of the things that weren't clear um, have, hopefully you're still seeing my screen, right? Yep. So um, one of the things that you talked about for commercial possibly was um, heading east out of town and I, when I looked at that I was a little bit concerned about that because you can if you can see it on this well enough um, a lot of those lots go all the way from one road to the other and so I was a little bit concerned that adding commercial, if we brought the commercial from the circle out to the east, that um, that that's really going to negatively impact New Durham Road, which is one of your most scenic roads in town. Mm -hmm. right. I wanted you to see this map and think about that. You're going to drive people to subdivide these big lots that right now extend from um, from the state highway to New Durham Road. Yeah, the other point, I guess, is it's a limited access highway. Yes. Trying to get a, a new, more accesses off of 11 to it's use those almost big impossible. lots. It that doesn't mean you can't have an access. They have to allow everybody with a road to have. I mean, these big lots here, um, you know, most of them have enough front just to have two entrances. So it's it's not no access. It's limited access. But I, I Access to New Durham Road. But I really think... Um, it would negatively impact New Dorm Road and this this end of town if you were to add commercial there. So, I think you know to, to I think the the question is based on I think what we were working on on the last master plan, and it was one of my ideas, which was where there was a somewhat. Um, available intersection off of one of the main roads because you didn't want the development on the main road that if you could have within let's say the the first quarter mile of uh the turnoff from the main road to be available for some of the you know a small industry somebody who wanted to have a carpentry shop um you know that kind of thing. Nothing, nothing huge. Not uh, gas stations and things like that. But um, so whether it was like the end, of, it's already happened on the end of Drew Hill Road where it meets Twenty Eight. Um, we now have three um, contractors' yards. <laughs> right. Um, so so let's. I mean, let's try to talk about one of these areas at a time. And and this was in my notes that. You guys, when we talked about making commercial, um, you talked about this as maybe one of the other areas. And I, I, I really think it's going to natively impact this part of town. So I wanted you to look at, see what I'm seeing and rethink that maybe. The concept was at the beginning of one of the roads, not all along the length of the road. Yeah, no, that wasn't the conversation though. We would, we were talking about we had to make the commercial district for the nodes isn't that what we're talking about no this is a the commercial district first she's talking about we're talking about the the commercial district oh, i'm sorry the question i thought here was nodes and well, well it isn't it isn't i mean because because if that's what you're saying then i think we've already covered the beginning of new durham road but right the conversation at the last meeting was that's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about when we were talking about where to make some commercial district, you guys said, or somebody said, how about along the north side of 11 East? Right. Yes. And I went and looked at the north side of 11 East and I see lots that go all the way over to New Durham Road and think, why would you want to muck that up? I think that we were only talking about going there a little bit to where there's a there's actually a lot for sale right now for commercial and maybe the next one over 
which is what? across the street, uh, which is on on the opposite side of. Uh, well, there's one over there too, but I'm yes. just saying there is there's a one that's from on for sale across from McDonald's. Yes. On, and then yes. there's another piece of field or lot next to that that's open right now. That's about as far as you might go. Mm -hmm. Okay, so we've covered that. We don't. We don't. I just maybe didn't follow you, but we're good with that. So um, let's see. Another one we talked about. I want to show you. Um, maybe I have it in here. This is what I was thinking about for the way to make the future land use map look without lines that are going to upset people, but <laughs> just kind of label the parts of town. And this might be a good time to get your feedback on that approach. Um, so we talked about commercial, we talked about an Alton Bay village, we talked about an Alton Village village, commercial in the parts of the current commercial residential district that are more big boxy commercial feel than village feel, which are which are these, and then um I got thinking, you know, if you, this junction of 28 and 28A, um, you really could bring this commercial district all the way up to there and include that. It's, it doesn't really make sense as like a neighborhood village type node, but it certainly, with the current land use around that, could fit into this new kind of district we're talking about. So one of, one of my questions, I have two questions in there. One is, how do you like this approach to a land use map, future land use map? Um, pretty non-controversial in terms of not drawing lines. And the second question is, do you want to bring this new commercial district all the way up to the junction of 28A, or should it should it have a gap in between? Well, again, you're dealing with limited access, you're going to have to have a, a location where you can bring a road off of to get off of 28. I think uh, right. access to that uh, that part of uh, town would be off of Old Wolfboro Road and not necessarily off of uh, 28 directly. Right. That's a residential road. That's that's all residential, yes. That's the same. Well, it it depends on what agreements are in place between the landowners and the state. When I mean, when they lay those out, there's there's an agreement with each landowner telling them how many accesses they can have on the property. Right, but they were deeded. If you had an alternative access onto Old Wolfboro Road, you had to take your access from Old, Old Wolfboro. You couldn't get it from Route 28. Yeah, so we talked about going up somewhat up 28 um, in maybe like... I think the first thoughts were going up 28 to may, maybe to Bay Hill. Right. Right, because that's up, where about up, the, yeah. the water lines we end were, right before Bay Hill, I believe. We were talking from Alton Motorsports to Bay Hill. Okay. I just wanted to throw this out there. The other so, possibility I would suggest would be on the side turn off road to where the Catholic Church is, where the, is the town planning to do something with that piece of land? Not as of yet. But I mean, in order, as far as I'm concerned, you've got a, a, a turn off access on from both directions. It would be ideal for a small park, yeah. industrial oh, park. Oh, definitely, mm -hmm. definitely. Right. I, I need you to back up one second. So, so the commercial is just going like from Hannaford's to Bay Hill, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. And and then, and, and then what do you think about one at that twenty eight twenty eight A? intersection that you were talking well, about. The little store is about to reopen this summer, East Alton, I think. East Alton store. East Alton store. And on either side, everything is developed. And on the opposite side of the road, there's a whole big new subdivisions back in there. So, but the only thing that developed would be, I don't think Don wants to sell his property, uh, but I mean, there is the store. There is a couple of little buildings with the store. Whether those would be developable or not, I don't know. There isn't much there. Yeah. There's not a whole lot there that's available. And a lot of wetlands on the right-hand side across from uh, St. Catherine. 
Right. So right. what did you have in mind when you were talking about it being a commercial node then? What, was, what, what did you want to see what, in this plan for that? What I, I had suggested, Tara, and, and you, you didn't agree with me, was that that would be a neighborhood commercial with that you could encourage more neighborhood uh, store features like the what the the, um, the East Dalton business. store because it's all it's all residential around that mm -hmm. because we're going with one of two approaches either go back to those nodes that you had in the last plan or we're going with the idea that you're going to let people tell you where the neighborhood businesses make sense and apply for a special exception. When we wrote that about the nodes, the property across the street was not yet developed. And it was not into subdivision. Right. So my, my point is our plan covers that neighborhood store, right? It's, yes. uh, it's going to allow things like that. In right. The world. And to, but your point is, I think is let us, instead of us saying, we think this would make a good neighborhood. Let let allow the neighborhood to happen if one is natural, you know, organically. Right. You can permit it. Right. Right. I mean, that's what the plan, that's what this draft says. Yeah, and I, I kind of like that idea because, yeah, I like that idea. I just wondered from looking at the photo and thinking about the plan, um, uh, the wrong one here now whether um yeah i just wondered if that might make sense as another um i'd like to make a, a comment about tom's comment about the town-owned land next to the catholic church the conservation commission is very interested in keeping that as con conserved land because it protects herd brook um and we already did a, uh, yep. a an eastern brook trout um, habitat enhancement project last summer in that really in that section yeah with the uh, trout unlimited so so, so you want me to take this this C off of here yes what's that so you don't want to see a commercial no they're, they're, no they're, no where he's talking about us on the other side of route 28 yeah i'm uh, talking about up near the near catholic church near st right. catherine that's where I have the C, right? So are you saying you don't you don't want that to be no, the C is okay because that's right at the corner where the what the uh, East Alton store is. They're not spots, they're indications of a new district. But that, that's okay. around there. That wouldn't affect it. All I'm saying to, to Tom's comment that there might be a, a possible to put something more um, commercial in near the church. Um, the Conservation Commission has really wanted to make sure that that stays open. As what are we dealing with in acreage there? About 30, 40 acres, something like that. Yeah. And it also, the backside of it runs up towards the dump. Oh, I know. It's, and, it's, and I don't know exactly where all that contamination from the dump is going. So there is contamination on the around, property. It's all around that, yes. So, but the thing is that if, if it could be put to some use, and a really decent setback put in there. But the, the key is that already you've got one of the requirements for a piece of development, which is you've got the turning lanes already built in. Right. So it would be ideal if you could put in, you know, wood shop, small sawmill. Well, it could, uh, be, it could be housing too. Possible. Yeah, well, it all depends on how good the water supply is. And if there's pollution there, that's going to be tough. It depends. It's going to be very tough. So, in any case, um, I, I just don't think it's it's something that uh, we should. Promote. That's been a thought for a long time, though. Yeah. Uh, I also don't think we're limited to the area of, like we're saying, from uh, Hannaford's to Bay Hill Road, from Bay Hill down to Lily Pond Road is is uh, all. Available, not available, but possible area for that sort of a development. Well, that got logged a couple it of got years logged ago. Logged on one side quite a bit. Right. Yep. And it's led on both sides actually. At the top of Bay Hill, just just past the uh, the well that, that's on top of Bay Hill, um, got that all got cleared a few years back. In terms of the limited access highway, you can get a cut. But it costs between fifty and a hundred thousand right. dollars. Right. 
but if somebody wants to put a business in and they're willing to put up that money to get the access, uh, we shouldn't restrict that necessarily. No, but if we can find a place where we there's a large plot where we can get an off-turning road correct, so that you could develop several different places, that would be... With a buffer? Yeah. With a proper I, buffer, I, so you're not seeing it from the, from the road? If you got on the Hidden Springs Road from that and took a left up towards the church and went by the church, there's land out behind up in there that could be accessed. From he was holding that for... What the heck was it? Um, he said he was going to, he was thinking for a home for the elderly or something like that. At well, one I mean, point. it could be some housing in there. Yeah. Uh, but I mean, there's they still a bit of land back there. Um, in any case, I, I, it's a, it's an opportunity for this node development to occur because of the, you have accesses from both ways from the East Alton store and from the other, other way by the church, something could happen in this. Something could happen. So are we keeping it as, one of the new commercial districts or we're just going to let something happen with the new neighborhood business I, I think that we could use that in a discussion perhaps Tara that says for example here's a, here's a spot that could possibly um, yes uh, develop like that but we're not going to we're not going to say that we think that something ought to go there but Plant the idea and <laughs> possibility. That it's a possibility. To but do I it. think the argument also includes the idea of like getting business off the road. Oh, true. Yeah, right. You're not impacting flow of traffic. And that's one of the things that people I, who are coming here are getting away from impact of traffic. Yeah, but I think that what, what you're talking Gosh, about reality, though, is, is that it's going to change. Yeah. This might be a great discussion because you're saying this, this access already exists, it's underutilized, mm -hmm. and it could be used for more. Oh. Uh, just another point in that particular area, just before you get to uh, uh, 28A, heading north on 28, uh, there is a, uh, another storage facility going in on the right hand side. So, and, and he's taken uh, advantage of an old, uh, it was a road access to be there. Garamichi. Oh, not. Oh, uh, it was the continuation of what was known as Long Hill Road. No, it was, it was, no, it's it's before that. Bo, Bo, uh, Bowden Road. No, Bowman. Bowman Road. Bowman Road. Yes. Bowman Road. Bowman Road. Yes. He's taking advantage of Bowman Road being there, and he's putting a storage facility in. That's and, and that's a currently that's a rural. Yeah, hotel. Hurdle. Yeah. And right. He's going to come in and want to develop the other half of the property from that the Miramichi end. end. I, I wouldn't be surprised. That one has has it. That one's already been. That was one of them that was approved. But but that's the kind of you know that he didn't make much of a buffer there. That's that's another issue. But if if we were to allow that kind of development to occur with access from the other side, that's that's a good thing. I think it's okay. I mean, I think it's okay to be. If we're vague, you, obviously. There's gonna to have to be a lot more discussion at the time that you work on the zoning. And that that was my thought in just putting the letters in rather than lines right now. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, I mean yes. the other way is instead of having lines, uh, maybe just um, shaded areas. But you don't even sound sure where you'd want to shade for the. For well, the, the, other, the other problem we're dealing with is we have to make it a large enough area so it's not considered spot zoning. Right. That becomes a real problem. Yeah, you can't just sit there and talk about so-and-so's property. It needs right. to be an area or a town that makes sense. So how does this look to you so far right, right now for a working draft? I can understand it. You have seas down with the Turtle Crawl trail, trail Park. Thing. That's the gravel pit too. We yeah. talked about going from behind the high school over to 140. Mm -hmm. That's that. Yep. Um, there are some businesses south of the river on... Um, Be nice to get an alternate road in there. <laughs> on, on 28, there's already some businesses south of the river that I, you know, that's, um, uh, box storage, right? Trudy's thrift shops. Well, the, there's also the, the tractor trailer boxes, right? There's something like that down there. Oh, but 
the storage on the yeah. But no. just I mean, we we're, we're not trying to. That's we don't want to make the new ones. We don't want to take areas that have businesses and yeah. not yeah. put them in. You really can't see from the road. Uh, yes, that was approved about a year ago. Yeah. The point is. Anywhere that has established businesses like that, you want to make sure and include in your commercial district or you're going to make it so they can't expand. So that's why I brought that down here. And, and I think this, and when you go to actually do a zoning map, there's going to be a little gap. I don't see this wrapping right around because there's a little section of 28 South that's just really residential in between those. But... Anyway, those fine points don't have to be part of the master plan. Right. I think it looks good. Yeah. You know, um, there's a good thing. I think there's also some area with. up at 140 that's, uh, they could be suitable. Well, it's already got the, the gas plant up there, the L, LP gas. Oh, yeah. You know, top of the hill there. Yeah, but I, I yeah. think further on, uh, south on 140, there, there's some opportunity in that area. Yeah, there's some big wetlands in there too. Yep. But not, yeah, not I mean, I, but, now I think that's fine. Yeah. But I hear, I hear you and everybody else want to avoid strip development. So I don't think you want to just string these down the different state highways. I think you want to have this, I mean, it's still compact right now, right? In the way we've drawn this, you have the village and you have these commercial areas around the village that need for uses that need more land than is in the village, larger well, lot. On the other hand, if we put too much land out there, you're going to get a box store wants to come in. So, I mean, we, we can't put enough out there for a, for a, a Lowe's or a, uh, I don't think anyone wants to see that in town. I mean, I'd much well, rather. You, you might be going to get another big box, but we've also recommended things like larger setbacks and a hundred foot wooded, buffer so that yeah. it would look like Hannaford's not right right so you I mean you can't tell the business if you zone it for business you can't say well we only want a local store or whatever it's but you have to manage the appearance and the way it feels to people instead right so um for the some of the other things that you talked about as nodes I wanted to make sure that your um you're good by now thinking of them as people could apply for special exceptions for this neighborhood business kind of category for like down in to the South in Alton and um, out by the Rand road, one that you brought up for us. Yeah. No, I think about like making it like a performance um, zoning and allow, allow it to find itself, I guess. Huh. Well, I mean, you know, for example, um, you know, within a, um, uh, a quarter mile or so, either way on Stockbridge Corner Road, if it was an availability where somebody could have a mom and pop store or something like that, you know, it, it, at uh, nine o'clock at night, you don't want to run all the way to town, get a, a gallon of milk. <laughs> right. So, I mean, if, if there's some place that's off the main roads, but near to them and not interfering with all the traffic everywhere else, you certainly don't want to have them down the, the small roads. Um, so whether it's, you know, whatever intersections you can find that have space that are safe to turn off. I mean, up near the Half Moon store, I think that's a terrible turn. <laughs> I wouldn't want something there, but... Um, yeah, and that's why I, you know, started, that's what started me thinking, why do you have these nodes in this other plan? Because some of these corners were awful. That's a tough spot. With it open the way it is. So I, I think we've covered that conversation in the future land use draft now. Yeah. I just want to make sure we weren't, that I wasn't missing something that someone still felt strongly about calling out specifically as a different kind of district. I don't know where the houses are. Yeah, they're all so, so I think we've covered um, three and the land use map, and we could go to the action plan. The action plan, yeah. Now. I, um, 
I highlighted in yellow. I don't know where I am. I'm not at the beginning. Hold on. Hard to miss it. <laughs> yeah, I just I knew I missed something at the beginning here. So um, I, I don't think we talked about this that I um, add in yellow. I it's But it's something that I try to put in plans. So many people aren't aware of these site assessments they have to get before they sell the land. So I wanted to add that up where we talk about septic, about wastewater and water quality. Do, who, who would be the lead in town to make sure landowners are aware of that? Building inspector health officer. Absolutely. But you don't want to dump more on John. That's not fair. Well, the other thing is, is you can make sure that the he can real, be a reference. real estate agents in town know that is a requirement. Is a requirement. Yeah. But so whose job would it be? I want to make sure and have it right in this responsibility column. Whose job would it be to tell them to make sure they know? It's, is really, some... it's a health thing. It, so it is. Have... It would have to be the health officer. Now, I've forgotten. Do you have a health? You have a health officer that's separate from code enforcement, or is it just a oh. different hat there? No, he's, it's the same person. Okay. So let's just make it say health officer then, right? Same busy person. Well, we're going to make them busier. We can't have some of the powers of the health officer. Or is he, he had them all. He has them. Yep. How would they be? All right. How would they be notified if there was a sale? What do you mean? How would they be notified? See, there's no town enforcement of it. It's something where the health officer would make sure the real estate agents know. This would be a part of the permit process. It's a state requirement. Yeah. In a sale, I thought it was it was mandated. It and is, I but I don't think the towns are empowered to enforce it necessarily. Right. That's how. So what, I, Tara? What's the what's yeah. the enforcement mechanism that they put in the law? What if, what if someone sells it privately? I, I, thought, don't, I thought it was part of the, the real estate deals. That you can't I don't think it has something in the law that talks about enforcement. I don't remember the being. I, I thought the state passed this was a state mandate, I thought. Yes. It is a state law. I don't I don't it I've never crazy. heard of it being enforced is the issue is the problem. Let's back up a little bit. 485 The way this is worded, it, isn't this part of the state uh, DES? In their permitting process, when it somebody's is. putting in there, I'm recommending that. Systems? Yes, it and it, it's a state law. I have it in front of me. Had a, a current system. Well, what is what is this exactly then? What is this saying? Is this before you build, or is this a property you built that's already built? I mean, a property you buy that's already built. Then you want to redo the septic system. Oh, you what is to, this getting to? No, it's for sale. When you sell it. Okay, when you sell it, then you always have to have proof. She's trying to explain what it is. Go ahead. Before you sell it, you need to have a, a septic designer say yeah. that what you have there is adequate for the building because that's how they're picking up the old ones that aren't adequate. Then the state takes care of it. Why would the town? Because the town, the re records are in the town. So the, the so state, the landowner, let me answer, the let me answer the that. The has to have it and supply it to the town. Yes. That's it. That's the way okay. I see it. I mean, I, I say that they have to supply it. I'm sorry, Tara. Tara's trying to answer. Yeah, go ahead. Well, you're kind of just going off on what the problem is, right? No, uh -huh. it's, it is a state requirement. The state doesn't have somebody out there enforcing it. So what I recommend is that towns do education on it, that you ensure that landowners are aware of the requirement. And, and I think do real estate, it's in, you can sit there and say, well, it's the state's problem, but it's your water that's getting polluted. I'm not, I'm not saying it's the state's problem, but, right. but it's always been the state has, has approved a septic system, and that gets brought to the building inspector when, they, when they're putting in a new system, and he okays it because the state has already approved it. So, it's really, I, it only gets enforced if the buyer complains and it's a five hundred dollar fine. It's not. It's, it's the enforcement on it is really what's missing, and that, that's why I think towns need to hop in and make sure that people are aware of it. 
then it goes back to the building inspector at, at, as or oh, health inspector. Yes. Right. It says Thanks. here the site assessment study form shall become a part of the purchase and sale agreement. The site assessment study form with stated findings shall be given to the buyer and the seller and receipt of the form shall be acknowledged in writing by the buyer and the seller. Failure of the seller or the seller's agent to notify the buyer of the findings or deliver the completed site assessment study form pursuant to the paragraph blah, 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 of this section shall be a violation notwithstanding shall be punishable by a fine not to exceed $500. So they're kind of putting it on the real estate agents is where they're putting it. Right. But there was a point out, there was a point, what if someone sells it themselves? Right. So I think the point, no real estate agent. the point that Tara made that stuck out to me was education. Right. So the health officer, as the health officer, can maybe provide, you know, uh, cheat sheets. These are the things that you made, you know, you made, right, right, as an informational, so he could be the go-to person, you know, and have, yep. we have that section right outside of the, between yep. both of our offices that have, you know, little pamphlets of information. It can be informational so that people are aware that yes. this needs it's, to get done. It's just an awareness. Right. It's more or less, this is more or less just an awareness. That's all I'm trying to get at is, yep. is to uh, nail down what this actually, what are you looking, what are you looking for? And, and you know, it's going back to the town responsibility of having a health inspector notify each and every person purchasing on Lakeshore property yeah. is what it, you're saying. There's another, the last section of this is kind of interesting too. It says, if the septic disposal system designer, that's the person who has to do this survey, all right, uh, during the course of a site assessment discovers evidence that there is sewage discharge on the ground surface or directly in the surface waters, the designer shall notify in writing the department and the local health officer. So there's some teeth in it, I guess. Yeah, yeah, a little bit. And I don't even think that the health officer needs to like notify every single person. Like Jessica said, like having a pamphlet or a cheat yes. sheet or something and maybe something on the website. So it's right. not. Mm -hmm. That's enough. That's adequate. It's more than what we have right now. Put that yeah. One. I was exactly. just trying like to. Having resources <laughs> yeah. available, but not, you know, yeah. being personally responsible for notifying every single realtor. Well, the, the difficulty is that a lot of the early exactly. yeah. camps on the lake mm -hmm. were 55 gallon drums of septic system. Right. Oh, yeah. And that's, that's I've met people who said, oh, we have a holding tank, but it's never needed pumping. Well, obviously, it's not holding. <laughs> it's, yeah. it's not working. Well. Yeah. As Irving said, someone put a, a yeah. spike through it. All right. Let's, um, let's go to the other next new one. Yeah, this is on wildlife quarters. Yeah, this was um, what you wanted added here. Um, and I wasn't. I wasn't really sure how to word it. I mean, I, I made Conservation Commission be the lead on it because I think, you know, you're never going to hear DOT volunteer that they need to do something about a wildlife board or somebody else has to drive them to it. Well, usually we get the Conservation Commission gets a notice of um, any work that would involve wetlands anyway by the DOT and also for the, for the town highway department. So we can do that. Right, something could be incorporated into the, you know, highway department, the, the regulations, you know, sort of encouraging, encouraging. Well, people. also, when we get to writing a conservation subdivision concept, one of the clauses we can have is we will give a bonus if they protect a wildlife corridor. Yeah, this one's specific to highways, highway crossings. Okay. But definitely, yes. And I did add that to the land use narrative. So those are the two that you had, uh, Tara? Yep. Yeah, I don't think there are any other new ones. in. Well, the two ones that are highlighted. So now everything in land use is new and, and is me trying to put words in an action form format to the things you've been talking about in the land use chapter. Um, it, it It's not going to look like this in the plan. It's going to be in a chapter. I just built it in the spreadsheet because it's easier to organize it and change it that way. So it when you see it in the narrative, um, all of these bullets kind of that I have an asterisk, they're all they're all zoning amendments. So I tried to lump all the zoning amendments together here. Okay. Thank you. So this is again trying to, you know, just take the things you've been talking about in land use and and put it into I put more detail in than I normally 
would in the action plan because I, I kind of want the planning board to have a you know, I don't want them to have to go back and read the chapter every time they're trying to work on yeah. this. Right? It's more, I think it's more useful. Uh -huh. Yeah. So, want to just go through one line at a time? I, I did. I, did the numbers are in your PDF, right? The line numbers. Yeah. Yes. So we could do like 38, 39. Yeah. And I'm just going to make any wording changes on the fly here. So it's done. So we good with 38? That's kind of the umbrella one. Yeah. I'm gonna, yeah. Yep. And then 39 is what we've been talking about of having Alton Bay, Alton Village, and then some commercial areas. <clears throat> yeah. That's, a, I think, the, the idea of developing the bay and the village differently. Very original and good idea. <laughs> Uh, no one has ever broached it before. I think it's right because they are clearly distinct. It's, oh, distinct areas, areas of yeah. town. Oh, yeah. It was the first thing I thought of when I when I toured. Well, it takes a new view what sometimes. Yeah, things. I know. I mean, I throw, I thought you look at the map and say, why are these? Why do they have different zip codes? And why are they kind of two different villages? But and then the same zoning district, but you get there and they're entirely different feels. So. We're yes. lost in the forest of it because we see too many trees. <laughs> yeah, well, maybe, but so oh, okay. So is the wording okay on those forty yes. and forty one? Um, yes. And then, yes. um, and then we have our new commercial districts. We discussed that, yeah, right. Yep. Yep. And I'll I'll fix that wording. I had the notes in there to remind myself to change it if you made changes to yes. whatever the map. But I'll, I'll make the edits to go with what we said. So the last sentence is allow big box retail only as a part of mixed use development with a question mark. Yeah, so that's something <laughs> just does throw it out there as an idea. Um, that's, yeah. I think that my impression is, is that the, you know, like the shopping centers and stuff, they're all dying and so forth. A, a great reuse of those is for mixed use with you know, residential in them, but we don't have one of those, so. But suppose, let's just say Walmart wanted to come in. Imagine if you had a zoning district that said, well, okay, but you've got to um, put some multifamily housing with it, for example, or, right? Mm. You want to live in the Walmart parking lot? <laughs> I think that goes back to Russ's point earlier, too, is it's like we also have to look at quality of jobs and like a, a whole slew of other factors uh -huh. too. So, and I think Walmart wouldn't be necessarily fulfilling a need. Like the town has a pharmacy, we have a grocery store. Then to put them on, it wouldn't business. be, it, yeah, it yeah. wouldn't be practical for the town. So, should we just be silent on big box then and just? Uh, that's what I'm saying. I think that's another uh, trigger word. Yeah. Not even, not even say it here. But that's why it's. It's it's more of a rural town because we don't have it. <laughs> so we'll just be silent on it till we till yes. you're working on the zoning amendments. Get right out of there. Yeah. Deal with it then. <laughs> that might be everyone in agreement. <laughs> is, is is there any uh, possibility of expanding the area uh, be, behind and beyond where the grocery store is, uh, I Hannaford? Have that is, is any of that yeah, I think I think there is, and I think you've covered that all right in in yeah. the way we've talked about the new commercial district. Well, the difficulty yeah. is they're limited by Range Road itself. Right, right, right. but but going up, there are houses in, in behind it directly. Road. Yes, that's what her it, map it's, shows. It's yeah. dead end. Huh? Be, her map shows. Her map shows so, yeah. behind the VFW. Range Road. Too, Range Road. It's like a dead that end. That whole yeah. that plaza but, there. There's more land behind there. If it was allowed to become commercial, mm -hmm. right? Would that be good or not? Well, then we just put that on the map. 
I think we have it on the map in a way that, it is. that area is drill into those details later on when you redo yeah, the zone. Houses might get bought, bought out. <laughs> yeah, they might get a little on un, un, upset side, but that can happen. But this is also a rough draft. Well, it's not so rough anymore, but it's a first. Oh, no, I mean, first draft to throw out, you know, you're getting to the point where you can put it out there and see, you know, at least I know you want to see what the, the rest of the planning board um, responds to it before you go any further. Right. Are we talking about 43 or 42? 42. Okay. Two. I'll, I'll clean that up, but I can't edit on this. Thank you. Here, so. I'll take my notes back out of there. I think we've answered them all. So. Where this says Old Wolf Bar Road, that's going to say Bay Hill, right? Mm -hmm. Yes, I think that yep. was. Mm -hmm. Yep. Charlie's property. Yes. <clears throat> and I'll take out this about 28 and 28A, so I think we're good. I'll make this go with what you said, don't worry. All right. Okay. Yeah, yeah. sounds good. So I think at that point, you're not gonna need this rural, I think this rural residential zoning district is gonna be parsed up with parts in the different villages and parts in commercial and just not really serving any purpose anymore. Um, I, I think you want to, going to want to get, just get rid of that. I agree. Mm -hmm. And then the next one, uh, we, this is where I talk about, all right, if you're going to go up, um, the, up 28 with commercial, you want to make sure that your frontage requirements align with, with the. DOT driveway policy. <clears throat> and I think you want to do that on all, all the limited access portions, really. The only problem with getting rid of the rural residential is there's a big difference between one acre zoning and two acre zoning. Right, and and you might want to expand the villages a little bit. And why not? We haven't talked about getting rid of your residential your residential zone either. I mean, residential we, stay just a rural residential. I kind of left that hanging out there. That's so that's what you, we're talking about. Uh, it, that's number forty three. Yes. Yeah, you got residential, and you got. She's saying you'll end up with a rural zone. In a residential zone, no rural residential. Mm -hmm. Right. Well, this was created specifically in the 70s by Ken Gilbert and um, up at the top of um, Range Road, mm -hmm. in Keith's Chamberlain's Chamberlain. So it was Keith's father, Richard. And, and Ken Gilbert were the ones that created um, the rural residential. They happened to own about three quarters of the rural residential of that zone. So that's the reason to keep it, right? No, okay. but you have a difference already in the zoning. Okay. And when you change that, you're changing anything that's in there that could be used for um, uh, cottage housing or whatever, you know, it would be in one acre lots we're, and and if it becomes rural, it automatically becomes two acre lots. Well, we can talk about the size of the lots that we have too, you know, we don't necessarily have to have two acre lots either. Well, the rural zone currently has it, so. Right, but that could be changed. I don't know. Anyway, I like yeah. her suggestion. Yeah. yeah. Getting rid of this middle ground thing. Yeah. And, and what I was saying is, you you know, we're talking about um, <clears throat> incorporating pieces of it into the most appropriate adjacent district. In some cases, that might be the residential district. 
it's not necessarily all going to be the rural district, the two acre district. In some cases, it might make sense to, to expand the residential district to take up some of this. Mm -hmm. But people are talking about, you know, the, the sprawl and it all starting to feel the same and you're trying to make clear differences between the village areas and the rural areas. Instead of, a, of this gradation, just sort of, you know, you really know when you've gone from a more dense area to a less dense area. Mm -hmm. And I, I mean, I think you, you totally could expand the residential districts to include some of this. Yeah. It doesn't have to all go to rural. That's why I said in the most appropriate adjacent district and kind of left that door open. The only thing I can, if we can go back to 42 for just a second, I, I know we've talked about Old Wolfmore Road and Bay Hill for that area. The only thing that I want to just bring up that Bay Hill Road is costing an over 20% slope. And there's been restrictions put on Bay Hill Road during inclement weather, not to use and for local residents only. Um, the only thing that we'd have to be careful with is with a commercial zone area up on top of Bay Hill is in, in, in adversely impacting Bay Hill, yeah. um, which is a steep slope, which has restrictions on it with a six, six ton limit restriction. Yeah. Um, that's one of the things we'd have to. I mean, driving the, the East Alton in fire mind. truck, we never went down Bay Hill unless Irving was driving Irving. <laughs> so it, it is just something to think about. Um, so what, do, what if we impact. say the vicinity of Bay Hill Road just to be yeah right because that's what you're talking about we're not necessarily talking about using that road well right I know that I know like the vicinity that. is what we were talking let's, about let's and say I, vicinity then yeah okay I've got no, a note to I just do thought I put it out there yeah I'll I just made a note to change I think that there should be a sign limited traffic <laughs> there already is well, well it basically it's got a speed limit sign limited uh, basically. Uh, do not use during uh, inclement weather. Right. Uh, six ton limit. Um, we tried to reduce it in speed, and, and it can't. The state will only allow so much. So you can't stop yourself when you're going down the hill, anyways. No. <laughs> Get a roller skate. <laughs> okay. no so skate. I think Thank now you. we're down to forty five, maybe. Yep. Um. Increase the minimum lot size in the Lakeshore residential zone to reduce the wastewater load. Right. Just in my mind, where you you the emphasis of this plan is reversing the the water quality trend on the lake, but you have the Lakeshore residential zone with thirty thousand square feet, and is tiny. Mm -hmm. You know, I know the shore itself is all developed, but. Um, when you look at you know the zoning map there's a, there's a ton more and there's a ton of it that's still woods i mean when i was there i saw two brand new houses in what had been a pretty field with a stone wall so the, there's a a lot of potential water quality impact left in there i think it's a good test we caught some flack when we were Changing the frontage. Oh yeah, mm -hmm. I thought that was a dumb idea. What we did. I thought it was too. <laughs> what totally did you? Fair to the people on the other side of the road in the same zone. <laughs> mm -hmm. Okay. Yep. Forty-six. And then forty-six is where we're talking about um, trying to loose lighten up a little bit on businesses. I know you, I mean, home businesses aren't allowed there right now. We talked about it, somebody couldn't put a little kind of, you know, lunch counter, whatever patio in their inn, with no restaurants. And, and I think of things like, you know, people trying to hold on to some of these family properties. Um, what if they want a paddle board lessons or a yoga studio there's some pretty low impact businesses that would be compatible yeah. with that district but there are also some uh 
pretty narrow roads in there. I mean, you want something at the end of sawmill? I mean, you, you, you have to pull off into someone else's driveway to let another car go by. But, but Tom, that's why we say that you'd need to look at traffic impacts. Mm -hmm. Water quality, noise, lighting, traffic. What is it going to look like on the lake shore? Because, again, this is, this is the big piece of your tax base that you don't want to muck up. Uh -huh. but you could be forcing some of those people to subdivide right now by being so restrictive that's not really a, a plus either well the thing is, i guess the traffic of the other one is you know depending on what the business is if you have any kind of a size vehicle or truck bringing in things, um, I know because I had a long driveway, when I met a big box truck to pick up loads of canvas and things like that, I would meet them out on 28. But, you know, you, you couldn't bring a box truck in on sawmill. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I don't think that's the kind, in general, the kind of business you're, you want to see in there anyway, but. Well, I mean, I, I had a home sewing thing, so it's, uh, but it's the way supplies are delivered. And that, that, and with a special exception, the zoning board could put conditions on the approval to yeah, say exactly. things like yeah. you, you can require you to go out to the road and meet. That's why it says a lot by social. Because the traffic is the problem. Mm -hmm. The zoning board gets to put conditions on those, so. Yes, yes. We work them to death, too. <laughs> <laughs> and the zoning board does put restrictions and conditions. Um, so 47 is where we're talking about the, the different categories of businesses trying to Trying to make it so the rural zone isn't a free for all, but has specific categories of businesses mm -hmm. with different special exception criteria. Yep. yep. I like that one. It's, I think it's good. Somehow, when you amend the zoning, you need to think a little creatively about how to. It, it might be a special exception or it might be a conditional use that the planning board gets to deal with. You need to think about the best way that enables the planning board to reduce setbacks so that, because at the same time you're talking about bigger setbacks, you want to see homes in the rural area set back more from the, the scenic roads, but a neighborhood business, you're going to want to allow to be close to the roads so people can see it and um, so somehow that that needs to happen in the zoning amendment but you don't have to see it really from the road i mean everyone knows where hannaford is yeah me i think what i don't know I, I guess in my mind listening to you talking about these neighborhood businesses and the stores they they were pretty close to the road and and more of a community focal point that way but we we don't need to ask those details out yet. I'm just saying that you you're definitely gonna want um, the planning board to have a hand in those neighborhood businesses, not just the zoning board. I think. It, I might I might want to change that wording actually to mention conditional uses as another alternative. If that's okay. A conditional use permit from the planning board might just kind of thinking of more about this as we go along. Um, a conditional use permit from the planning board might be another way to deal with these. So it, are you saying that during giving the special exception, they would issue a conditional use permit? Is that? No, if we, I think there's two options here. I think one is, um, for them to be a special exception that the zoning board looks up at. Another alternative would be to have it be a conditional use permit from the planning board instead. Oh, instead, okay. Like you need to, is it, which one is the better board for 
it's kind of node planning, let's call it, right? It might really be the planning board now that I'm thinking about it. So I think okay, I, gotta, I think I should put it in as a either or. And that they're allowed under the innovative zoning statute, same statute that is your wetlands ordinance and aquifer and those. <clears throat> that might be a cleaner way than having criteria that let the planning board change the set bar backs in the site pin review process. Now that I'm thinking about it. It's in your hands, Jessica, either way, right? So it doesn't make more work or less work for you. So. Well, I was looking at you either way. I know. It's, it's on your lap. Right. <laughs> Forty nine, right? Forty eight. Forty eight. Yeah, this is okay. uh, including incentives, encouraging open space subdivision. Mm -hmm. Yep, I feel like we already talked about that. We did. Forty nine. Like it'll be controversial, right? Oh. Hopefully we already talked about all of these things because this is just trying oh, I'm to dead set the, against it. <laughs> just trying to take the content of the land use chapter and put it into action items. Why would you want to have two houses on a lot? What if you want to? I have a project I'm reviewing that has about 40. What about an in-law suite or uh... an ADU or something like that? Yeah. Well, no, I'm thinking about a, like a, a subdivision that is um, condominium owned. You guys have talked a lot about these cottage uh, developments mm. you talk yeah, about. About this, what, are, what are we talking about for the size of a lot, though? The, the, in other words, whatever you have, it has to be able to be subdivided. No, you're, you're confusing density and lot. I think. Um, well, a lot. Right now, right now, you require only one home to be on each lot, but right, right. it's common in an open space subdivision to have all of the homes on one big lot. Right. Okay. And you don't allow that, right? You don't allow the kind of cottage development I've heard you talking about. It, no, it's not on one big lot. It's on the number of buildings subdivided into the whole lot. No, it's often on one whole lot when it's condominium right. it's on. What happens in that case though, is that that group doesn't pay the taxes on the, on the common land and the town gets stuck with it. So what our last attorney told us was anytime somebody wants to have common land, every number, every house on that subdivision has one that has a percentage of that common land. So that everyone, ha all the taxes are paid on the land and doesn't get left to the selectmen. That sounds like a different issue. Well, the other, the reason that we went to the concept of one house per lot was we had two and three houses on a lot that could not be subdivided and they were owned by different people. They couldn't sell them because you couldn't get your frontages but what we're talking about is like a kind of, you've been talking about cottage developments where, you know, somebody might build 10 small homes for seniors all on one lot with common land and, and access. And But why wouldn't they be 10 lots? Does the condominium concept come into play here at all? It yes. Like, it sounds like to me. It sounds like it should. Yeah. Yes. That, yes. Then it's divided by percentages on your. On your it, 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 yes. And then right. there's a shared, yeah. a shared property that you all pay taxes property. on. 
Yeah, yep. so you can get taxes on that share. For the yep. We, right. we had a real problem in town. It was, a, it was a, uh, the uh, assessor who was the one that said, please help me get rid of this problem where we can't subdivide these properties. Well, it, I can tell you that it's going to be a, we can get rid of it or we can make it say consider um, for certain condominium developments. But in all the years I've been reviewing subdivisions, I've only seen one condominium development that had a separate lot and separate condominium association for each building. Well, everyone we had did. That was what Jim Sessler required. So when we had the conversations through the Alternative Housing Committee and we talked about the cabin colonies, cottage colonies, we did talk about, you know, that potential of them becoming condominiums. Yes, yes. So, so that may be a stipulation of the cabin cottage colony ordinance is well, that, that, that they is are condos. condos. So, Actually condos. What if we said, consider removing the restriction of one zero to our zero, zero lot line condominium open space. The bad thing about the condominium is a damn homeowners association. I'm sorry. Well, it, it, if we're going to tackle the problem of uh, affordable housing in the town of Alton, we have to have some form of shared resource. Yes. Yep. Either shared walls or shared property or something of the nature. Yes. And if we shared don't. wells are the most. Say no to, yep. to the idea of uh, affordable uh, housing. Affordable and cabin colonies and so on and so forth. Right. And, and small we, homes. And we do actually have um, a provision in the zoning ordinance that allows more than one single family on a lot, which is in the rural zone. If it's a and, big lot. And if you had to have 45 or more acres yeah. and you're positioning that on the lot to where you could subdivide in the future. I saw that. It's only, it's, yeah, it's kind of crazy. Yes. But what, how does this wording look? Crazy, consider, yeah. consider, consider, removing, consider removing the restriction, blah, 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 to allow zero lot line condominium owned open space subdivision. 40 acres. Then, it's consider and you can come to terms with it later and talk yeah, to you. That looks better, Tara. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's going to be controversial. <laughs> it's it's yeah. It's the norm for condominium subdivisions. Yeah. Like it's the norm. Yep. And it sounds like there's an issue with the way you know your taxes are handled that's not the norm. So I think that's what you need to look at. When we had a few early subdivisions in the very early part of um, the zoning, uh, Black Point and places like that, people only wanted the half of the lot that was on the lakeside. They didn't want the other one. Some people built garages on the other side of the road. It's a cliff. But the, a lot of it was just, they said, oh, I don't want, I'm not going to pay the taxes on that. But so the town gets stuck with it. Well, that's just not something's not being done right in your in that end of things, not in the in the subdivision end of things. It sounds like. I mean, well, you no, you need it to was, make, was, it was, they transferred two lots. Well, Tom, I think you're stuck on some things that happened in the past in ways that they weren't supposed to be, and what's most important is that when you have well, avoid it in the future, though, that's all I'm saying. When you have an open space subdivision, when you have any kind of condominium project, you want to make sure that your town attorney approves all the documents in advance. That, you know, that's how you avoid some of these, a lot of these problems. Yes. That, that should always be a condition Before of approval. we had a town attorney. <laughs> yeah, well, that should, I mean, I always write that in the condition of the approval that they don't get the building permits until the town attorney has approved all the documents. Just so you know, it is 814. So we've yeah. been at, at this two hours. Let's try to move along. As the chair, as your vice chairman and the chairman, uh, the, well, they gave it up. Can you two guys just? We have right. we have a page and one left on the the last page to go. Mm -hmm. That's the last agenda item. So. Exactly. Yeah, let's. Yeah. We gotta get going. Thank you. Okay, number fifty. You talked about increasing the setbacks to. Keep the raw character. Yeah, that's yep. Um, I would also um, 
throw out the idea of reducing the frontage requirements as a way as a way to incentivize shared driveways so you see fewer driveways. Well, one of the, I, I, we also have a problem with some of the setbacks in that historically they have allowed people to put septic systems within the setbacks of the property line uh, and driveways within the setbacks. And I think a setback should be a setback. Well, you, well, you have to put a driveway in a front setback. Yeah, yeah, that has to it have. has to go there. That, Otherwise, you can't get to the road. But, but the, right. I, but the I think system. that you're. I think you're confusing setback and vegetated buffer. Oh, it's the side really setback. The, the so side we're, setback. People were putting them right on the sidelines. Yeah, but we're talking about frontage. This is reduced frontage. Only? frontage. Yeah. Okay. And yeah, but have we had trouble with shared driveways? I don't think we've talked about that. Not yet. Um, I mean, is that something that we want? In some places, we've really places. encouraged it. <laughs> yeah. Okay. There's a lot of shared driveways. There are. Shared entrances. Right. But there's not uh, problems between neighbors and that, that, that puts a burden on the town. Uh, not really. Not no, really. Okay. Not, re part, not really. It's residential. Not really. So well, the, the question becomes then of a shared driveway. Is it two, three, four? Or two. is it? A shared entrance, because the, the thing that we've currently done is try to encourage shared entrances and they split off immediately. Well, that's what it is. It's most of it is a shared entrance. Right. So and shared then the driveway is, branch off. a shared driveway is generally two homes. And if it's more than that, I would assume your regulations call it a road. Right. And it would be a subdivision. And you need a yep. subdivision road and all that stuff. Well, it's it's like I these roads going what down. What happens the, yeah. after two hours is you guys aren't even on the right topic anymore on some of these. Right, exactly. <laughs> People are getting punchy. Right. So, and keep in mind, this whole thing was prefaced with a paragraph that said, "Consider the following zoning changes." These are all consider, right? They're they're all prefaced with that. So, we'll double consider some of them, but. Um, this whole thing was considered these zoning amendments. Mm -hmm. And and I think we don't need to talk about the details of your zoning and subdivision regulations at this at the master plan level in terms so, of how many homes can share a driveway and whatnot. So I'm wondering about Tara, I'm wondering about 52, which is to um, make a duplexes permitted use in rural and lakeshore residential, make ADUs a use in the residential, lakeshore residential. And then we've been, but previous to this, we were talking about septic loadings and mm -hmm. more density in the lakeshore residential, which we'd like to avoid. So this seems to be in conflict when you say lakeshore residential. Well, I'd not necessarily because... Um... You're putting more people in more houses in the res lakeshore residence. More strain on the septic. Well, one of the so things we did was like you uh, have to you have to make sure the septic is suitable before you allow the ADU. Well, true, but if, if, when you're doing this, you're also putting in more pervious, impervious surfaces, more runoff more storm water controls, all of that by more density in the Lakeshore residential district. And it's near where a, a resource that we're trying to protect. So it does seem to be inconsistent recommendation. It's, I, 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 it's, I, well, it's, an, it's a special exception now. And I, I don't think those are the criteria they're looking at. Well, the state mandated the ADUs a few years back. Yes. And one of the requirements that we made was that in the Lakeshore residential, if somebody wanted to put in an ADU, it had to be attached to the main building. It could not be a separate building because yeah. we didn't want people to create separate rental buildings. Yeah, I saw that. I, I, didn't, I didn't comment on that. Well, that's, but I mean. Could we just, could we edit that so that it just said residential instead of Lakeshore residential? Because I think that's 
rural and residential zones. Rural yeah. and residential, yeah. I think a practical well, it's already a permitted residential isn't going to get too many of those requests right. in the first place. It's yeah. already a permitted use in um I, I was talking about the gaps you have. Yeah, right. It's already permitted in residential. If we put it in the Lakeshore residential, we're also, you know, staining our uh, golden goose. <laughs> well, that's what I was just saying. That, uh, All right. So you don't want any mention of Lakeshore residential in that. I, I think Leave it's that right out. I think it's inconsistent with what we've been trying to do in the water quality section. Okay. It, it is inconsistent. And again, and again, I don't think you, I don't think you're going to have that many requests in the in that zone. I think so. Probably so not. Just just leave it out, and if somebody makes a request, you. All right, it, it's uh, it's it's, it's done. Mom or it's dad is going to live in the ADU, and the kids take over the house. Did uh, uh, <laughs> Amy's got something? Well, I was just going to say that we haven't talked about short-term rentals yet, but for instance, like other neighboring towns are changing things so that it has to be owner occupied short-term rental like it can't be somebody from out of state buying a lakefront property and just Good. renting it out all summer long but what they're also go ahead but so this like for instance if we were to decide that that would be in the best interest of alton that section that we just said maybe we don't want about the lakeshore residential zone that might be a way to have short-term rentals and help alleviate some of the the lack of hotel accommodations in the area, but not have these properties that are lakefront properties that are just turning over, you know, eight to 10 new people every week. Yeah, I, I don't, my, I'm not a lawyer, but my guess is that the restrictions on ownership aren't going to hold up. Yeah. I don't think you're going to see those hold up in court. You don't think so? It it's never. I mean, we haven't been able to apply it to any other thing. I don't. I just don't see it happening. That's mm -hmm. like absentee landlords. Any place. Anywhere. You can say that the person has to live there. You remedied. But you remedy. I don't know. I think that's kind of iffy. But that's that's a different thing. Let's well, going back to what, if you don't mind me saying, what you were just saying of absentee landlords or or, or absentee people that are up uh, is a what I've been told and what I've seen in the past is the remedy to that is someone that's within 10 minutes of the residence to be able to maintain and, and properly take care of the property. So they hire somebody. So they maybe, but you have to be as long as there's somebody within so many minutes away. I don't know. I, with the regulations I've written, I've gone as far as the lawyers have, you know, told me we should try and, Unless you're applying that, are you applying that to every business? Are you applying that to every lodging? I, you have to be consistent. You have to be willing to be consistent with whatever you do. Yep. No, totally. I was just saying, thinking before we completely removed that, that that might be an argument for keeping it. As if... Well, we, it's not saying we can't, we can't put it back in later, but yeah. right. Right. <laughs> a little yeah. bit for now. For forward. Yep. Right. Uh, so we're going 53 now? Yep. Okay. I hope so. Density bonuses, smaller homes. That's consistent with what we've said above, I think. Mm -hmm. I'm all for it. even stay in what district there, just to, something to think about. Yep. Yep. And then the rest of these don't have stars on them. Right. The next, because they won't be indented under this zoning amendment umbrella when they're in a document. Right. They're not necessarily zoning amendments that come under that. And I think that those are uh, sort of a uh, plain Jane vanilla. They're fine. Yeah. Mm -hmm. and, the, and the review that has a mitigation plan. Are we done? This part. Uh, there's one on one more. 59. Next page. That's has a bit. We should, should review the hazard mitigation plan. It, and it will be. That's, I think that's nine controversial right too i haven't seen it in quite a while <laughs> i think we're done tara on the action plan oh you're frozen there you go you're back she's back 
Yeah, no, you just kind of fell out there for a minute. Yeah, I, I think we're done. Evidently. <laughs> on, on the action plan. Was, was yeah. that my computer trying to say you're done? Or? <laughs> yeah. um, they were about yeah. the agenda. Because all the rest of them were, were pretty non-controversial. Good. So, um, so yeah, I, bef I thought I need to hear from you guys before I meet with the Alternative Housing Committee. And, and we really should say something about short-term rentals in, in the land use um, housing section, but we haven't talked, I haven't heard from you guys that it's an issue. I haven't heard from the survey respondents that it's an issue. I, what, I, I know, I but, it's but yet issue, but. it's a huge issue and it actually surprised me that it really didn't show up in the survey as mm -hmm as a problem what so what, what, are the, what are the concerns and goals that we should put in the plan to provide a foundation for any regulations that you do right i think just like what we were talking about with other things in the lakeshore residential that we should be paying attention to the the environmental impact of short-term rentals in yeah. that zone basically as well. basically what we've talked about in the committee um or alternative housing we we touched on it we've talked about it a little bit because we're waiting to see what the state comes up with be, be you know in courts and what they come up with but important the most important is the septic system whether it's overloaded or not how many people can actually be used i mean if these things can be if this can be enforced off street parking which is important off street parking and, and and the allowable use of how many people that you every how many bedrooms if it's two bedroom three bedroom how many people are allowed to rent not 15 people then sleeping in in carts and sleeping in uh you know on the floor and everything like that you have how many bedrooms this is what it's allowed you have six people eight people maximum and having a actual permitting process with a fee and then the inspector inspects the property prior and the fire department inspects it prior for smoke detectors, carbon monoxide detectors, and so on. Once that's met, this is just all talk, what we've been talking about. Once that's met, they, they fill out that, that criteria. Thirdly would be notification of the abutters. And so the abutters know what this person is intending to do and, and have their input. This is just some of the things that we've talked about. Yeah, even with that discussion, I'm still unsure of that whole process of notifying abutters and, you know, time limits of when they respond back and how does that get taken care of? I, I have like a ton of questions on how that tough. would even take place. Yeah, so I think to do that, you'd need to, You'd need to have it be a conditional use or a special exception in the zoning so that, um, or require site plan review. Some, somehow you need to catch that in the zoning. Right. But, I but what, I, what I was hoping to hear from the committee tonight was, so I've, I've written these for, I don't know, maybe five towns now. Mm -hmm. and, and it ranges from, we want, we want, people to be free to do short-term rentals because we don't have enough lodging in our community right to at the other end of the spectrum we're concerned about rent long-term rentals being lost to the short-term rental market so we want to limit it to a number of days that makes it so that it wouldn't pay to buy a home just to put it on the short-term rental market so what what i think needs to come at the planning level from you guys is where do you fall in that? So that I kind of know how to work with the committee on this. Like, That's interesting because the conversations we've had really didn't. So it's almost like a combination of the two things that you just mentioned. There's been very many, you know, there's been a lot of issues. Um, there's been a lot of, you know, big corporate, you know, um, corporations buying up housing you know and renting it out short-term rentals so then you know you're losing out on that ability to purchase or you know rent um and the discussions we've had we didn't limit the zones we didn't limit um 
you know, the time of year. Um, it, we didn't, we didn't limit any of that. So we almost talked about both, you know, the, the concerns, but we didn't limit anything. What's the uh, definition of short term and long term? So the short, short term that we had it as is uh, 30 days. So up to 30 days, up to a 30 day rental. Like a, as a, a short a, term. A, It'd be a, like a, for a, vacations. Well, right. I think what you want to eliminate is the weekend. You know, they, you rent it for a weekend and you party and you, you know, the impact of that is- Well, can't you have a minimum time? Uh, no. And no, that's there, what there I'm is, leaning toward. No, but no, well, you, can't can't. Those, you, you can't rent something for less but than a month. Let's just no, put it this well, way. Most people, in most cases, they don't uh, because uh, it's not profitable for them to do just the weekend. I would say a week would be- a, You a, you a, can't regulate yeah. the number of days. Yeah. You, 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 can, you can draw a line that says if it's, if it's available for rent for less than 30 days at a time, that's transient and that's short-term rental. But you can't mandate that somebody can't offer it for a weekend. Right, right. No, well, that's, that's true. The city of Sanibel does. They, they say you can't rent a condo for less than two weeks or a house for less than a month. You don't have to be there the whole time. That, that, that's See, a beach, that, if, if you put that big a restriction on it, then people can't come here because. Uh, oh, no, oh, but I'm simply saying that you can put a restriction on it. No, you can't. You you can say you can define it, but the town can't tell somebody how many days they have to rent their I would if you're say, allowing short term rentals, you you can't put numbers on how many days they can rent it. I would say if you yeah. have you need a special permit or something, if it's anything less than a week. Yeah. Well it, you know or, or so it, that's put, difficult. Put in your own number there, a week or two weeks, but some kind of process that you have to go through a uh, an approval process if well, you want to go. If there's the so so uh, you, uh, I, there's people that are Airbnb companies, uh, like Airbnb, they're going through a full company insurance. These people put out to get you rentals, and in nine times out of ten, they by the week. Okay, not saying that they that they are not going to be shorter than that five days, three days. And the other uh, side of this is there's a lot of people that are just doing it on their own. Right? I'd like to get and you guys out, out of the out weeds. Of any company, if I could, I'd like to get you guys out of these weeds because you know the the regulations that you develop are going to be based on the best practices that all the land use attorneys have have you know steered us toward. And, and you're just kind of flying by the seat of your pants here. And what, what I, my questions are bigger than that right now. They're, are you okay with short-term rentals anywhere in town? Yes. Are you okay with people buying homes everywhere in town to be short-term rentals? Those are the questions I think that need to be. Well, that depends on, uh, on the proximity of the neighbors. <laughs> I have no problem. And, and, and that's, I've made it clear with with jessica and i have no problem with short-term rentals um i have one myself okay so i and i made it perfectly clear uh that that i have no issue with it but the issue with it is the abuse of it yes and if people want to deter their income and try to help with their with their payments and home and you know, whatever the, the the situation is their taxes or whatever, I think that should be allowable. But it, there needs to be a control as to how many people, what's the size of the property, what's this, is it on, they have no parking and they're just on the street and trying to do it. There's where the regulations in the septic system is yeah. to me is the most important. So kind of like what we've been talking about with new developments too, is like seeing yes. like impact on traffic, impact on septic, impact on environment, impact on neighborhood. Yep. So, it, yeah, I, I think short-term rentals are a great solution for it is. our community because we're a, a vacation destination, but- There isn't enough. Right, and there isn't enough. There's, there isn't enough. But on the so flip to, side of that too, we have natural resources we need to protect, so. So to, to give the, uh, one thing I want to do is make sure that any zoning amendments that you're thinking about are addressed in the master plan. So somebody can't turn around and say, but this wasn't in the master plan. So 
So I'll just put, you know, a few sentences about this being a growing um, way that people are vacationing and there are, there are some concerns about traffic and septic and whatnot. And then just, just a couple sentences and not make a big thing of it, but that will kind of give us cover. And then I'll add to the action plan um, a recommendation that says to amend the zoning to enable adoption to the enable the select board to adopt short term rental regulations. Yes. That sounds good, Tara. Right. Because, you know, we'll get into the nitty gritty of, you know, what's allowed, what's not allowed and, and things like that. Once we, you know, sure. get to that in the other committee, but to yep. just have some basic information on there to, to tie us to that. I think that would help a lot. That's Yeah. Very helpful. Yep. All right. Good. That's, that's all I needed you guys to do on this. Okay. Did the survey come out was a year ago? Yeah, uh, roughly. About. Just about. I, I just think yeah, it was in the summer. The survey came out now and short term rentals was on there. I think you get a lot more opinions now than you would have a year ago. I think it yeah. really took off last summer and had their own opinions of them because right. we really the verbal ones. I mean, you know, that's that really kind of blew up less. A lot last summer, either side of the year, but mm -hmm. I think if you, if, I think it was just the way that at the time when the survey came out, that's why it wasn't really talked about because it was just mm. really starting. Well, it's been it has been going on, believe it or not, for many years. A lot of a lot of lakefront properties oh, yeah. have been have been you know doing the rentals. Uh, for many, many years, it goes, goes oh, back. No, I understand that. It, I think the verbal thing where companies yes. came in and bought yes. them and the problems, I think that really yeah. took off last summer. And I think that's where the, yeah, I know that the rent has been yeah. going right. on yeah. Yeah, forever. I, can, I see your point. You know, but yeah. I think the verbal thing oh, it's true. took off last summer where, you know, where you did have the big parties over the weekend and, you know, we, we had people coming to the planning board complaining about it. And mm -hmm. I think if we did the survey now and said, hey, what do you think about the verbal short-term rentals? I think you get some opinions. Yeah. Oh yeah. You get it on both sides. Yeah. 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 All right. Well, we're gonna we're gonna enable that to happen in some in the plan. So <laughs> yep. that's that's really what I was looking for tonight. Okay. So we're through uh, the. Uh, I think you're on the infrastructure. Yep. 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 Five. So what's the status of infrastructure? Who is infrastructure? Well, that's facilities, transportation, yeah. water, sewer, IT. Right, Bob's been working. Bob's been working with Josh. Um, I still need to gather my thoughts together um, and check in on Scott and Courtney and kind of see how the, um, the study went or if it's still happening or if it's happened yet, I'm not sure. Um, I've been kind of trying to light a little fire under Kelly to talk to Kelly over at Park and Rec. Um, I provided um, Kelly, who's a Park and Rec director, the, um, the draft of the Park and Rec section. So that way she can kind of get an idea of, you know, the types of things that um, Kelly's going to be talking to her about. She's going to be inundated with the requests. Uh -huh. <laughs> and there were some things that you were tasked with that... Uh, reflect a lot of the building needs. Yep. Uh, like a lot of that information. Yeah. So we just had um, our first facility. Yep, just to try to. Meeting. Yep. Um, but I, I need to, I want to touch base with all those people individually too. Yep. To just have a conversation more specific to this. So. Yeah. And based on the timeline of what, like how we're going, because I, I did miss the last two meetings. What, is the date by which you need a draft? Or well, we we're, we're basically at the point of, we hmm. don't need the May 18th meeting because we don't have anything to do. <laughs> to talk about facilities on June 1st, I would need most of this stuff by the end of next week. Okay. From uh, on all these pieces by the end of next week. Is that doable for us all? Or should we readjust that timeline? Well, it's already been readjusted. I'm just, I'm just being the the whip cracker here, but it's already been adjusted a couple times. 
Oh, the, so the next meeting would be June 1st? Let's yeah, we don't have anything to do May 18th, I think. You guys don't need to see this draft again, I think. No. So it's part of a whole final. I mean, okay. I think you do want to give Jessica the your blessing to give what you've done so far to the planning board with the changes you talked about tonight? Oh, yeah, that's what I was just going to ask you. So on, on chapters three and four. Mm -hmm. yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah well we have one and two as well do you want to give them both i think i think they've oh, they've had yeah, we've already given one them two. one and two yeah did I, I haven't been to the meeting so. oh yeah that was a while back did they look at them and yep. say anything okay yep that was a while that was and they're um, okay with them december january so you'll do like three and four now so i i mean i can make the changes that we talked about tonight in on three and four and the action plan um, and I think that's really going to give you a good idea of whether you're headed in the right direction. To... So their next meeting is May 17th. I'll get it to you. Um, can you I'll get, get it before that? And then that way we can have some potential feedback from the planning board for the June 1st meeting. I can get it to you next week. Okay. Sounds good. Uh, so it's May 18th. On... May 18th we're not going to do because... We yeah. don't have anything have to do. Anything. So cross that off. Yeah. You get to sleep. Next. <laughs> Next meeting will be June 1st. Right. Mm -hmm. it, as long as I see most of the infrastructure stuff yeah. by the end of next week. Okay. Uh, that's going to be tough. It's real really impossible. Yes, that's impossible. more like it. This is huh? just about it's impossible? impossible. I said impossible for me. Okay. So should we look at June fifteenth and we'll have it by the end of next week? It'll be rough. It'll be rough. Okay, Bob says rough draft by the end of next week. I thought he said it, his life would be rough if he had to do it. But <laughs> <laughs> it's different. <laughs> it can all be rough. I mean, it's my job to make it not rough. I just need the content. Yeah. My, 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 my problem well, is I haven't written anything in in anger in twenty five years. I'm gonna I'm gonna writer, edit all of it block. so it I'm writer. gonna edit all of it so it looks like parts of a whole. So you know, leave, but I don't have any content to work with yet. Okay. A lot of the stuff that I I gave Tara was facts. You know, it was, it was stuff that all right. I got this from here. It's a, it's a Put chunk it of stuff that you can work with. And she, and she worked with. So. Well, we are, we on the IT section. We already have uh, Josh's input, and. Uh, Telecommunication pieces, maybe too simple, maybe not. We'll see. Okay. All right. You know, if you'd make it not as simple as I think it to be, I'm just gonna cut stuff out. So, so okay. <laughs> just, just turn on what you have. But, it very ends simple. up on the cutting room floor. So, uh, are we thinking we can have something to look at for June first? Yeah, I'll, I'll get you something by the end of the week. Well, from kind of everybody. Yeah. I will do my best. I'm a little backed up with applications for the meeting. It just needs to be enough to keep, fill a two hour conversation on June 1st. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay. Right. okay. So that's it on stuff for. Tara, do we, um, or should Tara stay on for number eight? No? Oh, the invoicing. Who oh, is number eight? Uh, number eight is now number 10. Oh, 10. Um, so yeah, it, um, so Tara sent me an email and just kind of discussing the, the fact that, you know, she's um, had to do a little more work on this um, chapter three than originally anticipated. Mm -hmm. So she kind of wanted to talk about whether or not um, we should start working on the next warrant article, probably the next invoice the, the, between this month and next month. Oh, you mean using, using money that was appropriated from the la, the From the 9,000. From the 9,000, yeah. 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 That's what it's for, isn't it? Yeah. Yep. Yeah. So what are you saying that? So I don't know, I'd like to hear what Tara okay. is thinking of what's coming up next. Well, I guess I was thinking that it might make sense to wait, like, I don't have a good feel for how much I'm going to have to spend on the infrastructure chapter until I see what I get from people. Yep. And, and 
we'll have a better idea of what's going to happen next after the planning board has a chance to respond to the land use chapter, I think. So we might be able to make this amendment be the one that gets you all the way to the end and the public hearing stage if, is what I was thinking. And basically some parts, I've had to use more time on some parts than we anticipated. So it's taken time away from some others. I've also worked on the action plan and the formatting while I've done the chapters. So I'm not worried about those budget lines. Um, but you get into the point where when you want to do more on one thing, it's going to come out of another unless we, right. unless we add some money. But I think we have a better sense how much money we need to add after I see the infrastructure pieces and after we see whether the planning board brains explode or they nod or mm. how well it's received at that meeting, don't you? Yeah, right. I, I don't anticipate uh, huge changes come the planning board meeting. So, so we might be able to, you know, expand the scope to get through any right. changes the planning board wants and through the public hearing process and, and all the way to the end. Right now, the scope just covers um, give you guys giving it the nod. Mm -hmm. Right. So be nice to just amendment once more and leave you a good chunk of that money for printing. And yeah. is there anything else you're going to want to do with it? Like, um, you know, have any other works you talked about workshops, if you ran into some particular issues or. I know. And I, I don't, I mean, as much as I want public input, um, I feel like that was just such a flop when we tried. We did a lot of work on those workshops. Right. And we got like three people that wanted to attend. What would you think about, um, I, I hate to see you wait until the public hearing stage to get public input. What if, what if you put, when you're done with the action plan, put it on the town website and just try to get the word out through the regular channels for people to give it a look and respond to that so that the first time they see it isn't the public hearing. Right. Yeah. Like I'd like to have some sort of schedule, some sort of meeting, you know, to uh, invite people. Well, do you yeah. do it publicly? Yeah. Why, why couldn't you just do it as an announcement on the, that would through Facebook or something. That would be better. Well, I think you want to do it. Just, I was just saying, I was just suggesting to give people more than one way, like they might come to a meeting, but they might also be able to respond on the website. Right. right. I was just trying to think of your time, Jess, you know, how much time. I, what's yeah. another night? <laughs> what's another <laughs> night? It's another night, dear. Yeah, that's what yeah. it's a so Maybe balance. when you guys are comfortable with the draft, maybe right. you have a public meeting before you hand it off to the planning board. <laughs> Right. I feel like having, you know, different different options for people and not just sort of limiting it at the public hearing or just, you know, comments off the Facebook page, you know, just just yeah. be able to have but not making it sort of a specific, you know, workshop title. We're going to talk about this. Like we're talk about all of it. I think that's a good idea. And I mean, if we put the action plan as the thing, right, that they target and say they can either submit the comments online or come to meet with the planning board to chat about it on whatever date. Yeah, because I did add some more um, funds to the operating budget in the advertising line, specifically, you know, to have um, you know, even maybe a couple of hearings if we had to. Mm -hmm. So, you know, I can advertise that in the newspaper. And yeah, I think you could use some of this money too. I mean, it's... You're not going to want to print a ton of copies, probably. People are more digital now, right? Right. There's a delicate balance that you need to try and come to grips with. Because when you solicit the public input, you're going to get the naysayers right off the bat. But what we really want to get is the other people who are going to make some constructive comments. And I'm not sure exactly how you parse those two. I think you want the naysayers because they are the ones you want to have the conversation with. And, and no, no, they already have an opinion. Hear, yeah. their, hear their concerns and have them understand why you're thinking what you're thinking. They're against everything. Yeah, they, they, they just don't want to accept anything. No change, nothing. nothing. They come in with a closed mind and is, those are the naysayers. They'll come in and say, nope, 
and when like you it's just the way it is. And when you solicit the public input, somehow or other, you want to make sure that you get the other inputs besides the ones that don't want to do anything. Mm -hmm. And I don't know how to do that. I don't know. You know, I've got to tell you that it's, I'm not the only planner who uses the approach of reach out to the naysayers and make sure you have it on a date they can come and make sure you talk with them. And I mean, I had one town that there was one person who was the opinion leader. And if he was against it, nothing was going to happen. And we had a workshop really just targeted at his concerns, spent extra time just chatting with him. He left there on board. All the zoning amendments passed. It, you know, those, those are the opinion leaders. Those are the ones you're going to need to get the zoning amendments passed. Now, now's the time to start. We did get Lauren Carr to comment. I had a nice conversation with him early on. He's one of the people I interviewed. Yeah, yep. right? yep. we paid attention to yeah. him. He's one of the yeah. people I... No, I mean, he was surprised when I called him up, but I think it's that what Tara's saying is just right. you got to get the camel inside the tent. It's much better. It, it, it is true. It is true. And there's some that speak louder than the others that they will listen to. <laughs> yeah. I mean, just pull up your pants and go. You know, I'd highly recommend that you, you know, give people like that a call personally when you're having that meeting coming up. It's going to make a difference. Okay. Two quick things. That I want to talk about. Good advice. Okay. Are, we, are we good? <laughs> so anyway, where are we? Are, are we done with uh, public input? No, that's not what we want. No. <laughs> I come the only public. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. What do you think of this, Tara? I think it's great. <laughs> You're doing a great job. <laughs> All right. Um, so our next meeting looks like it'll be um, June 1st. Um, and we have the, the two, do, two do items are to get the something Tara for infrastructure that she can work with. She's not saying she has to have it all written yep. as a or draft. She needs to have okay. stuff to work with. So get that to her. And then... <clears throat> I will. Um, I have one uh, page of suggested uh, edits, uh, Tara, that I'll send you tomorrow. <laughs> appreciate it. On it's page four seven four dash seven. It's up. I think there might be two places that you're sending me, but okay. Remind me of what the other one was, if you. Uh... I'll go back and look at the notes. Yeah, just send me an email and tell me which one it was. Yep, and then Tara will be sending me out chapters three and four, uh, with the updates, so I can get those to the planning board for May seventeenth. Yeah. Right. Perfect. And in the action plan, right? Yeah. Yep. Yeah. <clears throat> okay. If that's it, I think we can adjourn. So right. move. So move. Good night. At, Thank uh, you, Tara. Eight fifty-two. All right. Yeah. Have a good rest of the night. <laughs> All right. Thank, Thank you very you. much. Yeah. Good night. <clears throat> yeah, yeah, yeah. Wow. Before you take off, it's the in the ABA.